recording is actually on before doing the recap. Look at me, I'm partially prepared. That music is really loud. Okay then, guys. Hello. 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 Hello and hello to everybody. It's been some time. Welcome back. Welcome back. I uh, hope everyone enjoyed their break and hope everyone's ready and raring to go for this episode of uh, D&D. So, because it's been a little while, so we're going to do a little bit of an extendo recap. Um, for uh, And if I miss anything or everyone wants to correct me, please do say so. So, our intrepid band of adventurers, Ignium Seat, uh, continue on their quest to find the MacGuffins uh, that will help them on their quest to defeat um, the disciples of Thorizadun, the Oblivions. Uh, to do uh, to find one of their last items, they travelled to the Severos Isles, a small island chain uh, about a thousand miles off of the coast of the uh, off of the Sword Coast uh, from Baldur's Gate, chartering a ship, uh, the Highwind, and Captain Mo and Captain Morgus. Uh, you had arrived on the storm-laden island uh, as your ship was dragged in by magical currents and was laid waste to upon the uh, upon the shore. Where you were assaulted by strange fish-like entities, uh, these fish peoples, uh, that you uh, probably now know to be Sahagin. Uh, you fought them off, uh, the ship, uh, w the crew, what was left of them, uh, were rescued, and you made uh, refuge uh, and camp at another, slightly less damaged ship further down the way. At a bit of scouting at the island, you found some ancient lizard folk ruins, and you also found around the, uh, the southeastern tip of the island uh, a strange altar setup where human sacrifice was being uh, was taking place. Uh, you hatched a plan uh, to free some captive pirates, Captain Bru Bluebeard and his crew, uh, who would kind of who were imprisoned on the northern side of the uh, Sahagin encampment. You armed them secretly, uh, gave them the means that they would require to bust out of their prisons while you created a distraction, uh, and then made your way towards the Altar of Storms. There you've battled uh, fish people, you battled uh, priestesses and uh, elementals and strange uh, married creatures, but you emerged victoriously after a very, very long fight. Uh, but you got there in the end, uh, with clever tactics brute force, and a lot of face tanking by Zin. Uh, eventually, you broke, uh, af after the fighting had ceased, you found uh, the source of the magical energy propelling the storms inside an altar to the goddess Umberly, the, uh, the bitch queen of the sea. Uh, shattering the altar, you found its uh, magical core, which was one of the items that you had been searching for, uh, the storm shield. Uh, Jojo took up the shield and now wields it uh, for the greater good. Not long after, you had <laughs> shattered the altar uh, and retrieved uh, the magical item hidden within. Uh, the storms that racked the island begin to ver began to very swiftly dissipate the the, uh, the magical presence that was keeping them alive, keeping them uh, going. Uh, dissipating and fading off entirely, uh, even to the point where the rain and the clouds began to crack, and beads of sunlight began to began to uh, pierce through the darkness. As this happened, you heard dozens of loud, distant but loud horns coming from the west, uh, from the west, back from the Sahagin encampment as you believe that you probably have alerted who are uh, the re remaining denizens of this camp that something is off, something is amiss at the shrine. And that, I believe, is where we left off. Right. Anything to add or anything to correct me on? Didn't you forget Fred off? Sorry? What's Fred doing right now? Fred? Fred's... Fred's doing Fred stuff. Yeah, sure, but you know, I What? Fred? Is the, isn't he far off? Fred, Fred's... you don't know where Fred is. Well, you, you do, Fred's on a piano. He just asked what we missed, so I was just saying what we you don't miss know Fred. about him. I mean, we all miss Fred. Oh, We do. So... Um... You still have to... just to give you a few, <coughs> a few details. It is you out there. 
on your way to the altar, you did take a detour to look at the ruins and you uh, did manage to find a, a hidden cache of gold. And you also spent some time buying time for the uh, the crew to begin fixing Captain Bluebeard's ship. Um, so you did allow time for that. At this point, it is probably mid-afternoon. It was a long fight. You did a lot of scouting, a lot of uh, uh, stuff in the morning. And right now, it is probably about three o'clock-ish. It's very hard to tell the time, especially with the cloud cover being what it was, but as the sun starts to pull through, uh, you start to get an idea of where it is in the sky. It was about three, three-ish in the afternoon. Not too bad. Uh, the wind and the rain is letting up. Uh, you do still have active the wind walk spell for the next two hours, and the winds are the winds that were harrowing your movement are beginning to not uh, gone completely, but they're beginning to die down. All of these uh, adverse weather effects are beginning to lessen uh, with quite uh, quite a, uh, quite rapidity. So I'm not going to put you on the old map because I put it away. Um, <laughs> so igneum seat, what would you like? To do. do we have the party cake? Yeah, party cake's there. Party cake down there. Party cake, party cake. Uh, we should probably get back to the ship before it's being overrun by fishmen. Yes, okay. that would be my thoughts exactly. Is there anything else? Uh, do we have a do look we... at the priestesses? Do we want to save the captain? The pirate captain guy? They should, shouldn't they be by the yeah, boat, by the ship by now? By, by now? They were in the middle of the camp though, weren't they? They were in this were kind they? of area up here, yes. Yeah. But they had the tools to set themselves free, didn't they? So You gave them the fucking plethora of weapons that you've been carrying around. Yeah, like 20 weapons. <laughs> yeah. You just pulled out like, you know what, actually no, I've got a scimitar that I forgot about in my boot. <laughs> <laughs> so you did arm <laughs> them and... Uh, it's been about, I'll say at this point, it's been about five minutes since the horns have blown. We armed and legged them. And it is a distance, there is about a mile, mile and a half distance between the camp and your current location. Can we see anyone coming up the hill? Can we see? It, you cannot from where you are because um, it curves around and kind of embedded into the cliff face. Okay, Hence I'd you were like, able like to... to Let's have I a glance at the just, bodies and then get out of here. Just message them. Did we raise the bodies already? Uh, you have raided the bodies, so you found the storm shield, you also raided the uh, priestess of the tide, and you found the scepter of the tides, which is uh, this item here. Uh, effectively, it's an ability that allows you can cast a handful of water-based spells a day. Um, but you, that's the loot that you got. And you can also predict the weather. Because mm. why not? Sounds like because uh, I put a weather system into right. the calendar, and I want you to fucking use it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> What's the weather like today? <laughs> uh, let me check the calendar. Surprisingly, yes, not calendar. Calendar. surprisingly in the in the Sword Coast, it's quite a clear day. Clear skies. <laughs> Has the storm around us ceased now that she's out? Uh, so the so again, sorry. Has the storm around us ceased? Yeah. So it is dying off quickly. So the clouds are beginning to break, the lightning is no longer cracking, crackling, uh, but there is still wind, there is a bit of rain, it's not as torrential as it was before, but it's still like a decent uh, decent rain, but the storm is breaking. The wind's just gay. Do what C3 does that. That's it. He, he can't defend himself, so... <laughs> well, let's get out of here, are you saying? Yeah, I, I'd like to, like, edge my way along the mountain path to try and see if there's anybody running up the hill for you can turn into a cloud. No, we've already done that. Today. You, you still have, so it lasts for eight hours. You've got about two hours of it left. Oh, sweet. Okay, let's just turn into a cloud and float high above Wait. the monkey. Should I message Captain Bluebeard and just tell him to get to the front? Get to the chopper! Yeah, pretty much. Now, voice. <sighs> Captain Bluebeard, blue face guy, old man. Are you alive? <clears throat> you get back. No! <laughs> <laughs> How do you message him? Are you using sending? I only used to, yeah, sending. Alright, um, uh, there's a bit of a pause before uh, replying, and as you do get a response, and um, it's hard to make out through heavy, laboured breathing. It's like, 
I don't know where you are, lads, but yeah, we're fucking alive, and we're being chased by about a dozen fish people. Any help you could you lend would be fucking I would like, amazing. I would like to point out that in my message, I did also include the words "get to the boat." I'm fucking going. <laughs> okay. Uh, missed then. Drops out. <laughs> Sorry, so Captain Bluebeard informs Jojo that he is on his way. He's running uh, with his men, with a handful of fish people running after him. <laughs> okay, they'll be fine. We we'll take a handful. We'll, we'll see them on the way. Yeah, let's let's float as cloud forms, and if we can get in between the pirates and the fish people, we need to get a minute ahead of them to untransform and then. Oh yes, <laughs> they're dying. Ah, take a minute. That's ten rounds. They're all dead. <laughs> Let's go! <laughs> and I start turning into a cloud. Yeah, I follow right <laughs> You all focus for a minute and begin to obtain your mist forms once again. Uh, as you rise up into the air, this time, um, <clears throat> sorry, less harried uh, by those strong winds that would hit it, were hitting you before. Uh, you rise. You as you rise up. Um, I'd like you all to make me perception checks, please. <laughs> Perception checks is that. Yes, please. Perception is my jam. I'm sure it is. <laughs> <laughs> we haven't actually leveled up yet, have we? No, so you can't. You feel free to have done some precursors, but when you hit a long rest, that's when they'll take effect. <clears throat> oh, yeah, I've got a rough Ooh. skate, haven't I? Exception in my jam. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> okay, so as you guys rise up, um, Zin, Ranos, and Scaith, you no notice um, a, a large, a very large body of, of Sahagin seem to be filtering very quickly out of the camp up towards the mountain path. They've probably got about a third of the way of the path, about half a mile at this point. Um, and they are scurrying and they are running and they are kind of the path isn't the widest and you can see some of them even being pushed up as they scramble their way frantically trying to get up towards the altar and you can see more of them seem to still be filtering out from uh, the pond like the you have the rock pools there and you can still see people uh, or sorry Sahagin creatures crawling out of it on the very, very far distance, Ranos, you notice this because of your eagle eyes as, you, and as you're moving towards it as well. On the very far end of this camp, you can also see a very sm a small detachment of Zahagin who seem to have kind of broken off or are heading in a westerly direction. Uh, and the, almost some of the middle of the camp seem a bit unsure which direction to go. There's kind of a bit of confusion in the centre of the camp. Horns are blowing from different directions. You're unsure of what they mean and what, um, what they signify. And it seems to... Uh, a, a chunk of these uh, these fish people seem to be in a daze and they're not sure how to react um, and the forces seem to be divided and just a little bit ahead of them you can see about two dozen, two and a half dozen um, small figures <laughs> as they're running down the beach what do you guys want to do? Um, I would try to go ahead of them into the Intercept course uh, and try to uh, reform into a person and hope it's uh, well timed. Okay, the rest of you following Cloud Dad? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Randos, can you make me a straight intelligence check? Straight. Intelligence, yes. Not bad. That'll do. Trying to. Um, uh, aim and plot your intercept course, but you fly forwards, the ra rushing at high speed, the wind no longer um, slowing you down. No Sorry, why is it plus two, plus two? Ah, it's your roll. Fifteen's still enough. <laughs> but <clears throat> it's your character, you're not walking mine. Um, Check of all trades, maybe? I think that might be kicking in. Um, but anyway, as you fly like okay. an eagle, uh, you guys saw saw through the air at high speed to your 600, um, 600, speed of 600, kicking in, I think it's 600, maybe 300. 300. 300. Still quite fast. Speed of yep. 300 kicking in is, uh, and high gear as you press the red button. 
and you fly, you soar across the top, none of these Sahagin creatures really paying you any mind. And you see, um, you land uh, a little bit ahead of the, the fleeing mob. <coughs> I think we've lost Jojo. Probably slow internet. She seems to be coming back. I'll send her a 4G package. <laughs> I, I burned so much data in Romania because I didn't want to. Uh, I couldn't bother to connect to the Wi Fi. Um, anyway, so as you guys fly ahead, you land a little bit uh, away from uh, from the advancing horde. Uh, you can see uh, you land probably about halfway between the two boats. And as you land and begin turning, re reverting to your humanoid forms, you can see in the distance um, the boat. As you can see, a sail has been raised, and you can uh, also about half a dozen sailors of um, Captain Morgus's crew uh, wrapping these heavy, thick, kind of patchwork together ropes around the ship, getting ready to try and pull it down the beach. Uh, and they seem both relieved and terrified at the sight of sailors, pirates, sailors, pirates, same thing, and also a lot of fish people uh, heading towards them. So are you guys going to land in front of the fish people, fish. Are you going to land in front of them and try and you're demisting there? Yes. Awesome. Okay, thanks to Ranos's um, expert <laughs> geographical mind, you succeed in landing uh, and finishing your demystification not lot not very far before um, the uh, in front of the uh, the pirate gang. As they as you poof out of thin air, the kind of, captain stops. Are you? Who I think you are. Don't stop. Keep running. Yes. Okay. No, good running. idea. Oh. Um. He points behind him, and you can see about like so about a dozen fish people like they're not very happy. Bye. And they start running. Um. I'll turn into uh, pulling off into a T Rex, and I'll try to intimidate them from uh, following us further. Okay, so as you land, do you just have spell slots left for that? Impressive. That's the last fourth for spell, yeah. Okay, <laughs> yeah, you focus your mind on all the T Rexes that you've seen. Um, <laughs> you focus your mind and you recall that T Rex you once saw when you when you watched that play. Um, <laughs> Jurassic it's Park. A <laughs> <laughs> it's a T Rex. It's a cardboard T Rex. <laughs> um, and you, f you focus and you feel your form shift and whoosh, you grow to 15 feet tall and this massive gaping maw of teeth uh, protruding from your mouth T-Rex mouth, you know what a T-Rex looks like uh, I'd like you to make me a, an intimidation check with advantage alright oh, um, as Zid stabs you <laughs> <laughs> okay. Ah! <laughs> you grow into your T-Rex and you try to let out a mighty T-Rex roar, but you kind of <coughs> cough and you get you kind of get stuck in your throat a little bit as you attempt to roar at them and <coughs> you set out phlegm. And the creatures, the Sahagan, they kind of they take a step back for a second, unsure of what to do. Uh, but then one of them grabs this harpoon and gets ready to throw it at you. Did I should talk to one of the nice comedian clump. things. Say again? So did that stop them in a nice clump? Yes, let me put you guys on the map. Yes. This is in radius. <laughs> we have you a T-Rex token, right? I've already prepared a T-Rex, actually, for unknown reasons. Ooh, yes. Oh, uh, it's because we used to transform <laughs> someone into a T-Rex? I, 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 I put a T-Rex token on the map. I don't have the T-Rex stat sheet for you. It's uh, fine. Do we I may it have it in summons and constructs, but I don't think we do. Uh, no, you have control. It's not when we turn into that often. You've done it once, I think. Uh, in a combat scenario, anyway. Two seconds? I think twice. Is it twice? Yeah. So this is the third time. Nice. Sorry, too small. There you go, run off the T-Rex. Also, no uh, I will. Don't. If you just keep track of its stats. Yeah, sorry, no zen. Um, let me put some. Let me put some fish down. For the T Rex seat. 
Whoopsie, click the wrong button. Okay, so you have this, um, a, a large contingent of these fish people who've run after you, uh, and they're kind of, the T-Rex has roared pitifully at them, but it's still a large T-Rex, and they're a little bit unsure. It does a little bit remind you of those lizard-like creatures, um, but one of them, uh, they kind of rally themselves, ready to launch their spear spears at you. And I think at that point, I think it's fair if we do some initiative rolling. I'm just going to roll once for the wave guards and once for the bulk striders on this scenario. Wow. I mean, I technically get advantage, but I don't think I'll roll again. You know what? <laughs> um, I think that's probably a good shout. <laughs> okay. If uh, I beat a 25, you know I've got dodgy dice. That's it. <laughs> I mean, if you beat it, if you, I mean, you could crit again. You never know. <laughs> then I'll put you up to 26 just for the fun of it. <laughs> Alright, I'm going to try now. Uh, oh, no. Now you gotta take that number. <laughs> um, so I should have. Hit it for the Hi, come on. 18 for you, Gia. Yeah. There you go. I'll trust you. Yeah, I double clicked. Oh, or I misclicked first. Okay. Uh, I, jo Jojo's not in roll 20 at the moment, so. No. Can oh. anyone hear me? Yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah. Come okay, I, I put myself on on my phone. My friends on 4G. Something is happening with the internet in the flat, and I don't know why it's suddenly. That's fine. Not just for this behaving. period, I will. I'll run Jojo for you. We've got a little, just a little combat scenario right now. Okay, if in doubt, just hit things. I uh, yeah. Uh, there aren't many spell slots left, I don't think. Um, no. And you have a big sword. I've I've got all of my uh, core cool one channel affinity things for big healing healing if nice. I need to. Excellent. And okay. I've not used any of my sword or shield abilities. Got you. Yeah, no, I've got the sheet here. Don't worry. Um, no, I'm just saying what I have used. Sometimes I don't mark them off on the sheet because it's like I get one and I know I've done it. That's fine. So, yeah. Um, okay, top of the round, Zin. You got this kind of this. Um, Actually, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to roll some wisdom saves. What was your... yours was an 11, wasn't it, Ranos? So let's roll some wisdom saves for scare, being scared. I think that's fair. Um, if I can find my fucking character sheet! Uh, because... 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 All the wonderful things he does. So let's do, let's do some waveguard, wave, uh, waveguard stuff. One, two, three... Uh, sorry, they ain't afraid of no ghosts. Uh, Pulse Riders, one, two, three, four. One of them scared. You successfully intimidated one fish man, right at the back. Um, so, well, take that as you will. So, Zin, you're up. What do you want to do? Uh, Zin. Still the arms, isn't it? That's it. <laughs> Zin Still is going to move forward. <laughs> yep. As far as he can. And then he's just going to stand there and shout, Come at me, bro! Okay. He's bonus action to enter rage, and then I'm going to hold my action to attack the thing that walks closest to me. Perfect. There you go, you are raging. The enemy. Roll the, the enemy. dice. There there you well, the as the T Rex runs past me. Uh, stab! Stuck. <laughs> okay, Giovanni! Alright. I'm back! Where, where the hell did Eventually. Zen end up? Okay, I'm going to fireball straight into them. Fireball? Yeah. Oh, the ball. The bally one. So that's this one, I guess. How about fire box? Why never fo Why always fire ball? Oh never... yeah, I forgot uh -huh. that I put templates in. I'm a genius. Yeah. Uh, so I'll boom that there. Okay, oh. so run me some damage. Yes. Maestro. Yes. While Who's I roll... a dinosaur? Sorry, I think it's something. Why is there a dinosaur? Do you turn... <laughs> Sorry. Ranos turned into a T-Rex in an attempt to intimidate them, and then coughed when he tried to roar at them. He didn't do very well. I was a bit confused, but there was suddenly now a dinosaur. Alright. Um, that's a lot of damage. That's a really good roll. Yep. Um, okay, so let's go for one, two, three. All fail. Uh, let's try the Pulse Striders. One, two, three, four. Every single creature fails their dexterity saving throw. That is 7 nice. times 35 if anyone wants to do the maths on that. Um, I'd like to say it's a fuck lot. Um, 
And I have a feeling I know what's going to happen next as well. <laughs> <laughs> the cackle from the back. <laughs> yeah, that's my turn, man. Okay. Yeah, that'll do. That'll do, Giovanni. That'll do. Yeah. You can go back in your box now. Okay, as you let loose this uh, this ball of flame, it detonates with explosive intensity, catching fire to the two huts that are nearby as the kind of the uh, thatched type roofs begin to uh, be burn a light. And you can kind of almost see a bit of a, uh, maybe this was a bad idea on the face of the Sahagan. Um, Skaith is going to look at his character sheet. I don't think he has any spells left. So, Skaith is going to move up. He will, uh, he will bonus action dash to, to, what's he going to do? What's he going to do? He's going to, he's going to, he's going to just fire some Eldritch Blast at the nearest guy. I think he has three shots now. Perfect. Okay, so, three, two hits. So he deals 12 plus 22 points of damage as this wave guard is struck twice in the chest, the third shot going wide, but um, he is knocked back considerably, he starts skidding in the sand, his feet not getting any purchase. Uh, but that's that's Skaith's turn, because he's complicated. Right, what we're going to do is we're going to bum rush us in. So let's do that. Let's do that, and let's do. Does he have enough time to get there now? <coughs> uh, uh, sorry, looking at my wave guard. See, he does not have enough movement to get there, so he's going to dash to get to here. So you can make I your attack against the top that, yeah. against the top one. So you make your multi attack. I did one. Huh? I need one hit. You were holding oh, your sorry. action. You get your full attacks. Yeah, but the first one you weren't reckless, I assume. No, I weren't reckless. So the first one misses. The second one does does hit. Uh, yeah. Twenty points of pit, twenty points of piercing damage as you double shiv him uh, with the with the wooden blades, and he seems a bit confused by the wood. Uh, these guys aren't going to try and stab at you with their tridents, so we're going to make four strikes against you total. Disadvantage until one of them hits. Miss, miss, hit, Ooh. miss. So one of them gets through as you take eight points of uh, piercing damage because of the rage. Uh, there's a flurry of blades. And the rest of you just watch as Zin stands there, triumphant, as they bounce off of his pecs. <laughs> that he shouldn't have, but he does. Um, and, but one of them does draw blood. He doesn't seem phased. But that's my turn. Nira, you're up. I can't believe I rolled a two. <laughs> Actually, I'm a little disappointed. I haven't died since I got Relentless Rage. I can do it. It's something that I've wanted to try. Just like pop back to life. <sighs> Your heart like, killers is. Oh, uh, Nira, you are there. muted if you are. There you go. Yeah. I wasn't talking yet, I was just thinking. That's right. Um, let's see. So, if I wanted to do one of these. You're in range. Just right where he put it. <laughs> right where he had Second the other Second verse, one. same as the first. Roll me some damage and I'll roll some saves. Maybe I'll make one this time. Hopefully not. While that rolls, let's go one, two, three, four. And fortunately, what? I've done these high DCs. Um, so two make the save. 36 points. What is it with you guys? There's only one one in there. It's not fair. <laughs> so um, the top one succeeds. Let's move that over there. Let's, just, let's delete that for now. So the top one succeeds and only, take, only <laughs> takes um, 36 divided by 2 is 18. So 18. The second one takes full damage and fucking dies. The, uh, the second one takes half damage uh, and is down to 18. And the other one fucking dies. As these are large explosions. And the rest of you, as you kind of look past the flames, you can see what was a horde, a, a, an additional horde of Sahagin warriors charging down towards your position, who apparently have stopped in their tracks at this point and may be reconsidering their life choices. I mean, Geo and Nero have done 350 yeah. damage. I'm really. just going to move up next to the T-Rex and just start yelling at them. Just like full-on <sighs> Dragon War, just pissed off. Like, get the hell out of here! As you shout at them, the little remnants of the storm seem to crackle with you. Uh, <laughs> yes. Kind of amplifying the, the effect. 
<laughs> and, and that remind me, as you see the smaller reptilians, the next, the larger reptilians shouting for abuse. It's like my big yes. brother's gonna get you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> get the muscles on him. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Jojo, you're up. Okay, if, forgive me. I've literally just rejoined. I'm gonna get to any thirty feet. Yep. But it's mostly I want to cast Bane on the ones attacking Zim. Because yep. if everyone seems to be doing things that need to be have saving throws, I'm just gonna reduce that. Okay, so I believe it's a charisma save for Bane. Charisma save against. Well, these guys are really charismatic. Yeah. No. no. They are all Bane. They're all Bane. So that is. They were born in the dark. <laughs> so, oh. A D for oh. on all their attack rolls and saving throws. Good to know. Okay I have then. An awesome yeah. Thank you, Yama. Uh, they all, you, as you cast the Bane spell, you see this strange, almost uh, this dark cloud and shadow just drifts over their uh, their muscular forms. As they kind of all, they all kind of slump very slightly, as if uh, a heavy weight has been pressed upon their shoulders. Um, they kind of look, they exchange a glance at each other, like, uh, guys, maybe this is a bad idea. Just going to just go and hack at them, <laughs> like, get on. Okay, um, Big T. <laughs> that's, that's much more effective. <laughs> um, I'll start running towards the, the back row. I can't control the T-Rex, so I'll run over here. That's fine. Smack this guy with a tail. Yep. So, uh, just roll that manually. I think it's like a plus 8 or ten. something. Plus 10. 24 will hit. Uh, if this is something we'll do again, I'll create a proper token for it next time. Yeah. So 17, 17, damage. 17 points of damage as you swipe at him, hit, striking him with a large muscular While attack. running, and then I'll use the rest of the moon to get one or two, to one of the pull striders and bite. Okay, make your bite attack. He will up, he will attack of opportunity you. I don't think mm -hmm. he's going to do a lot. Oh, no, it's just the one it's... strike, so 19. So, uh, with a negative d4. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, AC is 13 on the... Okay, yeah, you hit. So you do take 9 points of piercing damage. Uh, so I do need to make a concentration check as you run after the bull strider. Eight. Eight. Oh, no, nine. Yeah. With advantage, Sorry, yeah. you have a DC of 10. Yeah. Uh, hold my beer. Yeah, you're fine. Okay. I mean... Deck beer held. Con, but it works. Oh, sorry. It's fine, it was a natural 15. <laughs> Natural He's 17. just so charming that the spell decides yeah. to stay with him. You've ever seen like a T-Rex with a top hat and a cane just having a, uh, having a song and a dance? That's right, awesome. But you successfully run up to the pool strider, so feel free to make your um, T-Rex chomp attack. Chomp? 16? 16. 16. That hits. Nice. Uh... And a strength save. Yeah, no. Um, so, with the 18 points... I pick him up, go him in the air, and wave him to his friends in the, in the back. And launch it, launch... You pick up the body, ragdoll it around in your huge dagger-like teeth, and then spit it out as it flies in a mangled mess and just crumples off in the corner. Um, uh, the other pulse... Uh, is that your turn? I can't mark yeah. him dead. Come on. Just do me a favour. There we go, die. Uh, this Paul Strider, he's already frightened. He's gone wrong way. He just... Nope, 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 nope. And he just runs off of the map. Um, you see him despawn about 10 feet away. <laughs> and fade into the background. Pixelated into the background. That's it. Okay. Um, Me? Uh, before I do, I'm going to get some more with some saves. These guys are fearless. Zin, you're up. Which guys? These guys? It's all a D minus D4. Minus it's, D4. It's more of just kind of like a check. It wasn't less of a save, it's more of a wisdom check. But, ooh, the spectral strike. Okay. Don't do it very often. Three saves. So, fail. Well, let's roll the D4 fail, for the, this one, the Bane just kick in, so they all fail as the deal. <laughs> 23 20, points 20. of force damage. I'm guessing that's, is that supposed to be affected by rage? <sighs> I don't 
If it is, it's 26. Uh, let's go with it. Yeah. Uh, so okay, 26 sweet. points of damage. Okay, as you swing swing the blades in a kind of a dervish arc, uh, you the rest of you watch as the blades themselves cut straight through uh, the the Sahagin as if they were as if they were spectres. Um, and after a moment, that's when there's a and they kind of cough out this uh, 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 hunk of blood as the top one just collapses to the ground entirely. He fucked. And the other ones still also take 26 points of force damage, and they're looking pretty rough. They're burnt, they're charred, they're not happy. Um, yeah, today was not their day. Today is a bad day <laughs> to be a fish. Giovanni, you're up. Uh, so all of these guys next to Zane look rough, I guess. Oh, yeah, the two of them that are left standing of the seven yeah. that I throw at you. Yeah, I'm just gonna spooky hand of doom the top one there. Okay, make oh, your the attack. The top one that's alive. That work? Seven, eleven okay. will miss, unfortunately, with that oh. natural two. Yeah. Um, and then I'm just gonna move back. Bravely. Excellent. Yep, and that's my turn. Okay, Skaith is going to move up. Now the wave guards are a little bit closer, he's gonna move up. Um, just so he's gonna burn a and dash, and he's going to unleash. With Feather Gale. Uh, at, a, at a range for a Feather Sneaky. And unfortunately, 15 misses. But he does get a second strike, I think, so. Or does that require his bonus action? I can't remember. Uh, okay, make a second strike. That hits. 27 points of Sneaky Thunder damage to the top guy as this, whirl, as this whirlwind strikes out, uh, slamming into him, kind of very neatly. Drifting around in, but not too far away, quite close. Uh, and slams into the side of the wave god, knocking him off balance um, as he struggles to regain his footing, but he's still up. Okay, wave guards, they're not looking very hot. Um, they're going to go ahead and make their four strikes against you, Zin. They are normal strikes because of their blood frenzy. Um, minus D4. Minus D4s. I mean, I don't think it's going to. No, fuck it. Nira, your turn. Uh. <laughs> 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 He's only got a plus nine to hit, I have no chance. Um, but Nira, your turn. Yes. Um, let's see. In fairness, you only had to roll slightly better than average. Yeah, you're not wrong. You, average. you had to roll average. I rolled a four, a two, and an eight. <laughs> yeah, let's just try to this guy's. Okay. So I'm gonna hit the... I'm gonna aim for the one at the bottom, I guess. Alright, make your attack. Yeah. yeah, that'll hit. Yeah. 21 points of fire damage. Cantrips at a high level. <laughs> <laughs> you strike strike uh, the target in the chest, and you see the firebolt burns a hole in its core. As it's like, uh, and it gargles, and it gets yeah, fucking dead. <laughs> okay, anything else? No. Okay, Jojo, you're up. Like, oh, I was going to run to the bottom one so I could... I'm a fancy shield lock. I can't get past him to go and attack this one. I mean, you, this guy is not exactly putting up a lot of resistance. He's dead. He is dead, so you can quite easily just run there. Okay. I'll do that. I just want to, I just want to try and hit things with my fancy shield and see what I can do with this. So... So you're up to this <laughs> heavy, wounded, charred, cut Sahagin creature and he looks pretty fucking miserable. I just want to hit him. Go for it, make your attack. Okay, I'm going to do it too. I'm going to do it with the sword, and then I'm going to hit him with my shield with my bonus action. No concussion. Punch, punch. Did you expect with a one. different? This is the, this is the, the guy, who, the person who gas chambered marks. Um, okay, so, um, if you want to roll damage for the sword, because I'm only seeing the divine damage on there, so it hit, oh, yeah, it hit. It's a, it's a separate score. So. It's a separate click, so I just Wait a minute, I cast, cast him on no one. <laughs> no, not you, Jojo. Uh, Jojo didn't do it, Skaith did that. Jojo just kind of went... Oh, that's okay. Yeah. <laughs> I was um, just following orders. <laughs> no, it's just that she didn't actually know what the other people were doing. She didn't have said anything. Okay, so as you strike down uh, with the obsidian <coughs> blade, bursting with divine energies, you deal 12 points of... Sorry, not 12. 
15, 16 points of radiant necrotic slashing damage because that's a thing that happens. That's what I do. And I um, came up the tip of my shield as well. As you yeah. as you slash down with the with the blade, you watch as uh, the kind of the light of life begins to die in the the eyes of the fish creature. And just as it started to fall limp, you spin around with that momentum and slam him with the shield. And you just watch as the body, charged with lightning energy, explodes. And there's just fish chunks just fly out into the sea. And you probably just helped made some seagulls very happy. Guys, I really want a fancy sushi right now. <laughs> and, just, <laughs> and this is weird, like lightningy, bloody cloud in the in the air. It's both fascinating and quite horrifying at the same time. Um, yeah, they okay. <laughs> They're dead. Um, uh, the rest you watch as ahead of you, uh, probably about two, three hundred feet away. There was an, a small um, army of these hiking creatures which were running towards you. And they're kind of all just kind of like they're but they're kind of stopped and they're talking to them like pointing like one of them nudges the other one forward to the trident. He's like no, <laughs> um, and they seem to kind of be hesitating at this point. You turn around, you have a look at the ship, and you can see um, Bluebeard and his crew have now made it back um, to uh, his ship that is recently repaired and is beginning to assist. Um, Captain Morgus uh, and the remains of Captain Morgus's crew with um, preparing the ropes and trying to pull it into the ocean. So, what do you guys want to do? Run off and help. I'd like to run over with my. There's a T Rex. T Rex form and help shove the boat with T Rex strength. Okay. As you turn. I'd be useful! And <laughs> you start running towards. <laughs> Uh, Godzilla begins to run towards the ship, and you watch as most of the crew, the, some of them drop the ropes and turn, start to run, and then see the rest of you running with the T-Rex, and they get really confused but go back to work, as cap both the captains start sh bellowing orders towards them. Um, you, eventually, you reach the ship, uh, and it is a patch... Now you get closer, it's a patchwork mess. You're pretty sure you can see holes, there are different types of wood... Uh, absentmindedly nailed in with these broken rusty nails. It is the most patchwork hob job that you've ever seen. You're not even sure if it will float. Um, but they're making the... Faith and duct tape. Faith and duct tape. This is the prayer band <laughs> ship right now. Um, you can see as they start to push and pull on these ropes and the ship. Um, is Who's assisting with the ship? And uh, Who's assisting oh. with... Okay. Oh, anything that involves being pushed. Okay, is it, what is everyone else doing? If anything. I'm you trying to get on the thing. There is a rope ladder that is kind of on okay. the top of the... Oh, sorry, I'm pushing. <laughs> okay, T-Rex so and Jojo, Geo, Zin... And... I'm pushing as well, I got the gloves. Oh, you got the gloves, yes? Yeah. Zin, what are you doing? Um, Zin's probably the weakest person here, but I'm going to push as well. Okay. <laughs> Actually, you could probably be better, like, playing with the rigging and just kind of because you're super dexy and literally just grabbing <laughs> all the rigging and putting it all in the right places because you know okay I'll, I'll, I'll do whatever yeah i'll do whatever i'm told okay. i'm just gonna run around like you, that would be I'm super helpful. helpful you go okay. you all run up to the bow of the ship and you begin to push uh and uh zin you as you're pushing against it your legs are just slipping in the sand you feel i'm not doing anything here and you see nearer <laughs> ascending and you go i can do stuff up there and start to climb up uh, the sails <laughs> And you hear a few curses from the sailors below as you're making their job slightly harder. Uh, but the rest <laughs> of you, if you'd just like to make me strength checks, uh, T-Rex yeah. and beefy forms. <laughs> Scapes flies up as well, and he starts to use, um, try to use Feathergale to generate some wind to push him back. <laughs> and from you as well, Jojo. I rolled, which is not coming up. Oh, okay. We'll give that a oh, moment. I mean, we've got two 23s. Enough. I do love how our barbarian, our barbarian is the weakest person in our party. It's a strange <laughs> scenario, but let's dig it. So, give it an hour. <laughs> um, so as you, all as a group, you watch as the ship was moving ever so slightly under the weight of the sailors, and as the three of you join in, there is a very noticeable improvement as the T Rex kind of <laughs> pushes the shoulders and starts to shove uh, the bow of the ship towards the waves. Geo cracks a knuckle and starts to push. Jojo leans against it casually, and the ship begins to quickly move back towards the ocean. 
Um, you can see again, uh, as you look over, you can see those, that's the Hagen group is slowly edging towards you, but they're not sure. Uh, they're still hesitant. That display of raw power uh, that you demonstrated among their comrades has, get, has definitely given them a lot of pause for thought. That of the T-Rex. I'm going to turn around and just wave with one hand at them and just smile. I think I, I think I do have fish guts in my hair from oh. one of their exploded bodies. <laughs> yeah. So it's just... Hi. I imagine you used to miss. You know like when you spray the odor in the front of you and then like shimmy walk, through it. Walk through it. <laughs> <laughs> so... Um, it takes not much more than a minute or two of pushing on this ship, and it starts. You see the the waves begin to lap up the bottom moat, and with a uh, uh, it starts to take what take into the water. Uh, as you do so, some of the sailors watch as you guys seem to be doing pretty much the lion share of the work at this point. They start to I clamber say, up the rope ladders. Go on, Nero. As we start hitting the water, I'm gonna go down below and make sure there aren't any like holes. Okay, so make an investigation bend. check. See if you can f to keep an eye out. Uh, Scathe will help you, so have advantage. I'll put my light up. <sighs> Rocky nice. comes out and having a look around, looking for any anything as it hits the water. The crew Good begins to start climbing up the rigging, up the rope ladders, Sorry. trying to f uh, <laughs> starting to get into position. You can hear from the top of the deck, um, not conflicting but overlapping orders from the two captains. <laughs> it's uh, like parts of the Caribbean we get. Exactly, you've got, you, you've got Jack and Barbosa fighting for it, and apparently, but you get the idea that Bluebeard's got the louder voice, and slightly more intimidation to him. Um, and limbs. And limbs. <laughs> um, yeah. But it doesn't, it doesn't stop Cap Captain Morgus for giving it a try. Um, after a few more minutes, um, you manage to shift the boat enough that the, your, the bow of the ship leave, begins to leave um the the shoreline and hits the water um the crew start to unfurl sails and put the they put the ship in reverse and they start it starts to float away it starts to move back and starts to take under its own weight nearer as you look down you see if uh, uh, not moments after it hits the water you start to see about half a dozen small holes where the repairs have been kind of patchworked, and you start to see these small um, uh, holes appearing with water taking up. Not, not very quickly, they seem to have made a good job of what they had, Since but there are definitely holes. Anyway, can I try to mend it back together? You can start trying to, and start kind yeah. of trying to merge bits of wood that Something. kind of work and kind of don't. Uh, I will say that, it's a, I know it's not necessarily within the cantrip, but you're kind of at that well, magical level now. If we're using evolving cantrips, I can do up to a foot. Yes, so we'll say with that, um, you start to work and you start to concentrate on your mending spell and trying to plug the larger gaps and holes where you can. And mm -hmm. uh, so we're not taking the water. It seems to be effective. Um, okay. But the ship now probably uh, gets uh, starts to take to the water. Those of you on the ground, what do you want to do? As the ship starts to move away and the rope ladder is probably about 10, 15 feet out to water. Go to the water. Go to the ladder. You can try and go for the ladder? Okay. Yeah. Actually, who's who's the lightest? Can I just throw Giovanni onto the boat? Please, I just really want to throw someone. Yes, I've been yes. wanting to do this for a long time. Make me a str an athletics check. Okay. I've been wanting to do a fastball special with the person for so long. <laughs> You should have done a You grab Geo, you're kind of pushing the boat, you're like, how am I going to get up there? And you just watch as Jojo scoops you up by the feet, just holds you there like you're made of nothing, and shot puts you. Yeah. And you <laughs> Make me a dexterity save. So make me an acrobatics check to stick the landing. Uh, oh, you do. You do a yes. bit of a roll, and you ta da a bit of a flourish. You're yeah. on the ship. T Rex and Jojo still on the ground. I, I will. Can I just climb onto the ship van so we can make go for the boat? Yeah, you can run up my back and, and jump, and I will, after that, uh, find a suitable piece of wood, jump down, and then cancel the spell so I'll shrink down up to uh, whatever I'm biting into. Well, and then I can pull you up from where I am. So yeah, we'll, do, yeah. we'll do that. I'm gonna okay, so I'm gonna run up. I've thrown Giovanni. I'm gonna run up one us, jump onto the boat. He's gonna turn into a he person okay. and then I'm gonna pull him up the rest of the way. Fair enough. So you 
as you stretch out and you the spikes upon your back and tail form a very um, a very convenient staircase structure out of the Flintstones. <laughs> and just Jojo, you run up and dive onto the deck as it's starting to move away. Uh, just as Rouse, you chomp onto um, I don't know what the name of it is, but the bit of wood that sticks out the front of the ship. Uh, you grab onto that, and you drop down your polymorph, and you start to shrink towards it. And with the momentum, you manage to grab on as Jojo grabs you by the scruff and hauls you onto the boat as you begin to pull away from the Thank island. Thank you. Um, you've got a few splinters. You've got, like, a splinter in your tongue. You're like, eh, eh. Pull it out. It's not very comfy. But <laughs> it's just wood. <laughs> um, and you see, uh, as you guys get on the boat, you hear, as a a handful of harpoons strike into the side of the ship as it's pulling away as the Sargans seem to have gathered a bit of courage up, but are putting up a very feeble defence. And they're not even enough to pierce through the hull. Nearer, you don't even notice the uh, the the, uh, the coral-style harpoons uh, piercing through. They don't get. They don't manage to make it. And after coral bleaching is brilliant. Sorry. No, it's okay. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and then. The ship begins to pull away. The waves no longer seeming to have that same um, strange pull to them. As the ship begins to pull away from the sh from the shoreline, you hear a bit of a scrape as it hits against some low lying rocks and some coral. But with Nira down there helping, uh, to kind of ma pat patching it up, it seems to go pretty smoothly. And within the next f a couple of minutes, the ship is pulling away from the island, and you seem to have made it. To relatively safer waters hmm. as the Kraken returns. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Let's do this! Let's do it! Uh, Zin just drives into his open I have two level three spells. <laughs> so, as you begin to pull away from the island, the storm um, continuing to dissipate, and as you can, almost as you can see in the image, and the storm leaving and pulling away from the island, the odd crackle of lightning and thunder here and there, uh, but the rain no longer slicking the deck. Um, you catch your, you take a moment and you catch your breath. It's, it's been a um, quite a fast-paced thirty minutes almost, uh, as you and the crew kind of. <sighs> Drop a uh, an exhale as so I, almost calm descends upon the ship. Uh, both captains uh, w walk and roll up to you. So both they mop mop a mop away their brows almost in synchronization. It's an interesting sight to see. And they both go to speak at once, hey, and they keep interrupting each other and a few times um, they, they re repeat this act several times before Morgus eventually backs down and Captain Bluebeard speaks up I, I, also, I, I, I turn so I am specifically facing Morgus and my back is turned to Bluebeard because <laughs> I only respect one captain <laughs> alright I think we need to agree who's going to be the captain of this ship and I got more crew uh, well, you may be right, but and this may be your ship, and uh, hmm. he kind of, Captain Morgan just kind of looks at you and like imploring, like I got nothing, help. It is, is his ship. Cool. Yeah, but he's Morgan's is cool. It's his ship. It's our ship. You give your home to someone else because it's, he's cooler than you. Yes. Um, uh, maybe literally maybe what we can. In my fat back, but my backstory. We can we can discuss this on Morgus. We can discuss this later on. We're a bit out of danger. Um, that was that was quite that was quite a quite a harrowing few days. Um, that was that was really fun. Let's not do it again. <laughs> ah, you, you yellow belly. That was great. It was an adventure for the for the and a tale for the ages. Uh, we were singing about this in the taverns for uh, for years. We do this sort of thing on a regular basis. I think I like you lot. Uh, well, before let me uh, formally introduce myself, Captain Bluebeard, at your service, scourge of the I mean, freelancer of the Seven Seas. Uh, welcome aboard my ship. Well, maybe my ship. We'll talk about that later. 
I'm not one to say this often, but you have me thanks. Um, were it not for you lot turning up when you did, me and me crew would have been fish food. And, uh, we're in your debt. Who the fuck are you, anyway? Uh, we are Igneum Seeds. <laughs> At your service. Night, awesome. Never out of here, but I guess you're not names on the fame on the seas, really, are you? You don't seem like a lot, a no. salty lot. But you can use the name in your tales. I. When you tell it. Uh, you seem like a fearsome bunch. Probably a few of you may have heard on the mainland. They'll help me cred. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> now we've so got to get. Uh, we, we need to get out of here. We need to. We need to get somewhere to patch up this ship. It's. Uh, I've not had an inspection myself. But it's full of holes, and it, we took a lot of damage when we crashed. So I have a feeling... Oh. I've patched up most of the holes in the hull. Alright. Uh, Jimbo, go and do an inspection run for me. And um, uh, this kind of young, gangly-looking uh, pirate sailor type chap starts... Uh, okay. And heads down and starts to do a sweep of the, uh, the bomb. You won't need Where's to, the closest very port? good. Say again? What did you say, Reynolds? Where's Where's the closest port? No. Oh, we're, f we're fucking miles from any port. It's going to take us a good, maybe a week to get back. Uh, to be honest, if the ship's seaworthy enough, we might even look to sail towards the mainland. Um, some of the ports around here, um, especially uh, the nearest one's Cragmore. But um, I didn't leave there on the best of terms. Deal gone wrong, you know. Uh, but... How? We've been away for some time. What's the coast like? The ba Baldur's Gate any good? That's alright. Yeah. Water it's Deep good. is uh, in deep trouble. Deep trouble, you see? Well, it's, yes, it's in uh... the name. <laughs> uh, what Indeed, kind of trouble? <laughs> um, the necromancer raising the dead, uh, sucking life out of the city kind of trouble. Oh, I think I heard about something like that. Terrible business. Terrible business. Yeah. But see, it's, you see the city's in a bit of a shit way, do you? Yes, I don't think you can enter even yeah. by water. Uh, we've got some pretty Suck fancy cannons on this ship, and um, where... Where there's a ruined city, there's booty. Mm. Well, you would think so, but you would be lying on your deck, uh, half dead and comatose uh, if you get too close. Mm -hmm. Sin just pops up going, oh, I like booty. Hey, this guy's my kind of lad. Say, Captain, uh, have you ever been uh, far to the south? To the south? I know, it's a bit warm for me. The seas are a bit more tropical. I prefer my... I'd prefer a journey to the north, around the ice key, uh, near the ice peaks. He kind of gestures to his thick fur coat. That's a bit tattered now, a bit bloody. I gesture to our <laughs> full fur coat. I must admit, I, one of the things I first noticed about you was your sense of style. Um, you've got a fine, you've got a fine uniform going on. I might just must say I'm mighty jealous. <laughs> Good. I, I may have to. Uh, <laughs> I may have to get myself one of those. You, know, what's, you, you, you asked what our plan is. We need to head to the mainland. What, what about you? You're coming along. Well, I guess you ain't going to well, fucking about choice. To swim. All right. By my estimation, he licks a finger and kind of puts it into the air. Mm. Actually, I think we have alternative ways of getting home. I think we need to go, like, tomorrow. <laughs> oh, yeah. We need to get make sure they're not going to be in danger on the way back either. So. I think we'll maybe rest here for the for, for the night. But in tomorrow, we've got a way off the ship. and uh, we're, uh, Well, from what I've just seen, I, I thoroughly believe you. And don't worry about <laughs> us, lass. I've sailed these seas for more than 30 years. I know my way around here. Okay, I'm back. Sense. Have you ran into the Kraken yet? I've spotted him from a distance. Uh, I've chosen not to particularly engage with that one fool. He's a bit of a legend yeah, around here. Uh, so he many chose of my to engage mates. with us and then he ran away. 
I see. So. Um, I will put your faces on the side of the boat. <laughs> I'd scare him away. Maybe. Can like, we well. check? Yeah. If we leave, you and our crew that we came on in with are gonna be perfectly fine, right? He kind of looks around at you, looks back at the charred beach and um, your tail of the kraken. He goes, "I think we can come to an arrangement." Well, because if you don't, I'll make sure we teleport back here and I will explode you. I half believe you. No, I will actually explode you. Yep. I, yep. I could see it I'll happening. Believe me. Fully believe her. Okay, I will keep that in the back of my mind. Um, very well then. Well, we're going to head back to the coast. Um, what if you spoke to me? Was it you? Oh, yeah. I think it was... Well, can you do it again? No, I said. Oh. Fair <laughs> enough. Well, I was going to say, if you ever need... I, me and me lads, we're in your debt. If you ever need a hand, you need a stout crew, or somewhere reading, give us a shout. Um, once I get my ship patched up, we owe you one. Hmm. Much appreciated. Yes. I'd get the ship patched up very quickly. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, we'll make haste. If the ship will carry us, I reckon we can get back to. We can probably get back to the mainland in mm, just over a week. How long until harvest now? Ten days. Ten days. Yeah. Ten days. Okay. So a week. A week. A weekish. Yeah. So it will get oh, back. But to a week is ten days, right? Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Um. How long until the ship's seaworthy again? Well, I, I'll, 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 I won't know until Jimbo's done his inspection, but if you've done as good a job as you say you have, maybe we're all right to go. I uh, might be able to stop off on one of the ports on the way in, fill up on, do a quick few uh, f quick few jobs, replace these torn sails, get load up, load up there uh, with a bit of uh, bit of gunpowder, and we're off for a go. Sounds good. So, you have need of us? Well, if you can contact me to go for it. If you can't, we are fucked. Because I am out here on the seas. Now, if it's alright with you, I need to organise our crew. Uh, we've got a lot of work to do and a small crew to do it with. Uh, if you want to lend a hand, you'd be appreciated. Um, of course. <coughs> alright then. I'll do what I can. Good to know. And with that, uh, both Captain Morgus and Captain Bluebird, they start to w uh, walk away together and start kind of conversing a bit heatedly, but start to discuss the plans for where to assign crew, discussing what, who does what and what the current skill set of the crew that they have is, and begin to um, man the ship between them in a joint captainly fashion that um, seems a bit strange. Um... It is getting towards later on in the evening. You can see uh, far in the distance that the sun is probably you've probably got another few a few more hours of sun uh, before uh, before it sets because that's what suns do. Um, is there anything you'd like to do, or would you like to just spend some time helping up with the ship, resting, Ranos? Um, are we getting close towards the break? Yes. Good. I, I was going to see what you wanted to do in that break. Okay. Uh, I need to drink because Captain, Captain Bluebeard's rough. <laughs> <laughs> I'll just um, I'll do what I can for the ship and um, and then just find the most comfortable place to sleep I can. Okay. <laughs> Anyone else want to do anything in particular? Or just helping out and getting to the rest? Yeah, point? just helping out and resting. I think. Okay. Well, that's where we'll make our break then. So we're going to do a slightly extended break. We'll do like we'll do like a 10, 15 minute break. We'll continue when we get back. But um, do you we'll, you help out the ship for a little bit, and then we'll kick in the long rest. So if you do your level up, do complete your full long rest, add any new spells, any new abilities, create new health if you haven't done so already, and we'll do that now. Sweet. Um, otherwise, though, I will be back momentarily. I'm going to go grab myself a drink, um, and I will be back soon. Or mm -hmm. something. Show you. See you in a minute. <laughs> <clears throat>
So we're level 13 now, yeah? Yeah. Cool. I'm all done. So Already. One more level. One more level. What, to your wings? Yeah. That's all she cares about. I'm so excited. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I've got to be level... Yeah, level to level 15, so we're level, in a level 9 and the level floor of 4. Level 13 for Barbarian is so boring. I think we get two more levels. What does a level on a level of time get to do? Barely. Oh, wait, no. I have a level 7 spell. Oh, I'll get to yeah, my level 6 spells by the time you start doing things. Cool. On the plus side, and I do 6d6 damage when I crit. I chose this. Okay. Ooh, that's fun. It's expensive though. But we got money. <laughs> so, simulacrum, is that what you're going with? Yeah. Oh, God. That, and my secret spell. Well, okay, it's figure of death. Yeah. Let's do it. I have not picked one yet. Ooh, I don't know what sorcerers get for seventh level. Uh, I'm looking at it right now. Hmm. Oh, seventh level. That's a lot of scrolling. Fire I could storm. also take figure of death. Um. Wow, Firestorm's powerful. Um. I, I feel like teleport could be helpful right now. I don't know why. Holy jeez, I'd get ready to give your character sheets to Jacob. <laughs> oh, you and up to eight willing creatures. Um, is yeah. I th I thought yeah. it was singular, but no, it's a lot of them. Yep. It's a lot of you, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Wow. And I can take an object with me too, as long as it fits within a 10 foot cube. What's this? Yeah. Uh, the teleport oh, yeah. spell. Alright. Um... Yeah. And if you have a, um, a permanent circle, sigil sequence, you know, you can just go directly just go there. there. Like, so not worry about. That's it. So you could do vigil quite easy. Yeah. You could do vigil. Well, you can't do vigil right now because you turned it off. Well, see, now that's that's the question, though. Is it based on the the sigil's power or my power to teleport to that specific location? I think if you're burning a seventh level spell for it, um, I would consider it. <coughs> so now we can go there without having to worry about the circle being on. That's it. It depends if you want to go for some beefy. If you do uh, deal, if you want to protect yourself or do some damage. Um, Cold. I've already got enough damaging spells. Yeah, true. <laughs> like, 
Yeah, you guys don't don't want to damage that 350 points or whatever the fuck it was. You just did. Um, annihilated everything. Um, yeah. I may have to reconfigure some of my boss fights. Um, but we'll deal with that when it comes to it. Yeah, but it was only so much damage because they oh, hit. That's so it. Many it was a lot targets. of targets in a small area, so, you know. Um, it's understandable. Uh, but it's like if you look back at the rock fight, that was um, that was a thing. <laughs> yeah, but didn't you design that for, so it would be fun for us? Sure, I designed every <laughs> fight to be fun. Yeah, but it was kind of like a, I think he's done some of them just as a. It wasn't designed to be a waffle stump like it was. Um... I think the thing is with that though is it was a singular enemy. So we could focus it. Is, and it was a singular you, memory that was stuck in a box as well. Yeah. Whereas if you look at the the what do you call it? On the stop coast. On the island. Uh the, the Sahagan. No, not the Sahagan, the thing it's on. Oh the Marid. Yeah, the Marid, sorry. So if you look at the Marid, like that's a Kazaji skill, so it was just me pounding on it. It's just basically you 1v1ing the Marid while everyone killed <laughs> fish people around you. And then Danny came across and, like, killed Stommy. He did. <laughs> I mean, that's that just sounds like Danny, to be honest. Sorry. Yes. Yeah. You're working on an enemy, and you're just about to go and do the final finishing move, and then he appears and kills With his it. Girl. I'm just going, what? Yeah. And I'm just like, hey, do you know how long I've been working on this thing? Give me the satisfaction. <laughs> yeah, sounds about right. Um, I can't, I've lost the, I don't have a party cake for this area. I've lost the badger as well. I know you're here somewhere. Um, but I've lost the party marker for this map. Or oh, there wasn't one originally. Whatever. Uh, there we go. Big buzz you will do. Let's shrink I'm also thinking about taking <laughs> prismatic spray. Prismatic spray is nice. Uh, it depends if you want to do some damage or not. Okay. You've made Big Bodger tiny. Big, oh, yes. I, have you seen how big he is? Look, that's the size of the aisles you're just on. Big Bodger is like five miles long. <laughs> Be happy with Big Bodger. I'm always happy with Big Bodger. He gets to talk to me and we have conversations. Oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> he teleported. Oh, sorry, Arcane Badger. Hi, Adrian. Katie? Hmm? What, uh, what are you getting for 7th level? Uh, it's hard for me to decide these spells. I don't know. Should I go for something damaging? Should I go for the teleport? Should I go for plane shift? <laughs> Just get a See, who has the amulet at this point? Do you have the it? Yeah, oh, the health one. So no, yeah. the plane shift no. one. No. Either Scaife or Geo. Okay, yeah. uh, I'm not sure if you think Geo did the last shift. Yeah, yeah uh, I think Scaife is not attuned. Scaife isn't attuned at the moment to it, so. I don't think anyone is. I never have any room for attuning. <laughs> Attunement limits, the greatest weakness. I know. Yeah. Oh, God. Ah, oh, Tufissa. Oh, I've just had to give up all of my health in exchange for increasing. Because I can't, why can't I have four things? Yeah. Or five things? Why yeah. can't I have all of it? I've got an art. I've played with artificers, and they suck. <laughs> in what way? They just don't. They they do some cool stuff, but they're not. There's. They're kind of like a hodgepodge of different things, and they don't really do anything very well. Did you uh, with the new version or the old one? Uh, so I've had a player who uh, had one player who did the original version and was a gunsmith. I think that's uh. that was okay. Um, there was another one. That, we've got one that's playing in the other game right now. He's actually using a revised, a homebrew variant of it, uh. Uh, which I can't remember what the name of it is, but it's uh, quite a big one on DM Skills. Uh, he's playing an alchemist from that one, which is it's so so. Um, and I, I there've been so many revisions now that I've lost track. I mean, whatever Sam Regal played, I think worked quite well. 
But that was a while ago. I don't know what version. No, to be honest. Um... He won the Battle Royale. <laughs> yeah. Through yeah, cowardice. Yeah, I mean, he, so he only won. His, 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 the class wasn't very good. It was more of a case no. of it was powered by gold and lots and lots of really cool items. Um, Which I think fits the class, yeah? Yeah, kind of, but he bought them rather than made them. Um, and mm -hmm. the rules, if you follow the, rule, follow the rules for creating the items, it just doesn't work out. And the, what, the stuff uh, that the original ones that could make were pretty pathetic compared to the magic level of some of the games like this one. At level level nine, you can make a bag of holding. Oh my god! Uh, type I have thing. ten. I mean, you can sell bags of holding. Yeah, but it it's like takes them f year, like f a month or two to make them. Okay. So like... I don't know. Maybe just. They don't scale same. well to the magic level of a world. We run in a very high magic world. You guys have got a lot of toys, a lot of a mm. lot of um, things. They wouldn't fit in this world necessarily. I mean, that's why I'm looking forward to the, future of it, the possibility of doing a low magic one at some point, just so we can kind of... We will have um, to see. Um, okay, are we all back now? Magic is bad. The yeah, arcade Magic is bad. For everyone else. But us. <laughs> that's oh, it. Banned, but it's banned because it's bad, but we have it and we want it. There was a there was a, a show that I watched once, and there was uh, an arc of that show. It was all about, it was all about wizards. Um, I say show is an anime, but regardless. Um, and in one world, magic was plentiful. And everyone had it. They kind of had their own source, like you guys did. But the other in the other world, it was a limited resource, and there was like uh, everything was powered by like crystal. It was like like a fossil fuel. <laughs> and it was a, and it was like, oh yeah, no, we just create magic. She's like, no, you're wasting it. You're wasting. It. No, I just make this because I can. And it was a, it was an interesting uh, set of episodes. Um, <laughs> So you guys being teleported to another world of limited magic would be interesting. Which show an like, anime where they trust be like Harry and Junkies looking for a fix. If anyone's interested, the anime was fairy tale. Um, but anyway, got any more of that magic? Now we're all back, I believe. So let's jump right in. What's so, with the spells, guys? We need to decide. Coordinate. So we've got Geo's got secret and Simulacrum. Um, have it's you chosen Gio, it's been growth death, it's not that secret. At least try and mess her along with me. Um, <laughs> but you know, with that name, it, it could have been I... anything and he would have picked it. Uh do we need resurrection? No. You've got raised dead, so What if I wanna resurrect a really, really old corpse? A hundred years gonna old. You're gonna find you're gonna find I don't know, fucking Rory. <laughs> or... Garen? Fred, maybe? No, Fred is older. Fred's very old. Um, Garen's a pile of ash. You need a body for the resurrection, unfortunately. I mean, Ash's body? Sure. Because he's a dead creature. He, he touched a dead creature. He comes back just in his small, ashy form. He's a very tiny, <laughs> six foot tall ash golem. Yeah. Is it just me, or does mod modern cane sort suck really badly? Modern cane's what? Sword. I've never, I've not looked at it. It's one minute and it's a glorified spiritual weapon, 3d10 damage. 3d10 damage is bonus action. Yeah, I guess if you're building like a muscle wizard, maybe. I don't know. I've never played so it's this level. Uh, I don't know what these spells yeah. do or what they look like. <laughs> yeah, it looks really bad. Nathan's getting scared. He's like, I don't know what they're going to do next. I've <laughs> given up trying. I really want project image, but I can't think of a use case, really. Except for Giving speeches to bad guys without them being able to hurt us. Give the speeches to the bad guys. Just do it for your own ego. I mean, if you want to give speeches to bad guys. He, uh, well, I... we, we have discussed that Ranos will be going down the evil path later on. So, there you go. Uh, you, go. you are the bad guy, so you can give a speech to your minions later on. Think, think... I mean, you can you can go full uh, emperor with that spell. That's it. So. Uh, in the interest of time, if you want to discuss your spells later, well, you're welcome to do so. However, I, in the interest of time, we're jumping in. So, you spend that, that afternoon recuperating, you spend a bit of time resting, uh, Scaith takes his mandatory short rest, uh, so he can actually do something. Um, shots fired. Um, 
you help out with the boat. Um, the the inspection of the uh, inspection of the hold comes back, and with the patchwork job that the sailors had done, and with Nera's mending uh, mending ability, uh, the ship appears. The the inspection comes back okay. It's not perfect, but it's not going to sink anytime soon. Um, the pi uh, sorry, the sailors. Not pirates. Uh, the sailors uh, advise you that they're going to spend a bit of time. They're going to head off um, towards uh, an island known as Cragmore, which is actually just off the coast here. Uh, so it's about just in this direction here. It's going to take about five days to get there. But that's their current destination. There's a small cove there that they tell you about. How many are there? Of the sailors, there's a total of 20. Mm -hmm. Is it sailors and pirates? Sailors and pirates. There's only about six sailors left and about, about a dozen pirates. Okay. Um, but they seem to be getting along. The sailors were originally a little bit nervous, but it seems like the um, in term in times of great peril and strife, bonds are formed, and that may have happened here, or the pirates will slit their throats as soon as they turn their back. You don't know. Um, but you also find that you need a crew think... of about twenty people to man this ship as it is. They don't kind of need them even regardless. I so... think Bluebeard sufficiently scared of us. He does appear to be slightly rattled um, by the fact that you detonated detonated fish people, turned into a T-Rex, pushed the boat off, and fought off the Kraken. Um, yeah. Um, you guys are pretty scary. So, you come to in the morning, you feel refreshed, you feel emboldened, and you're starting to feel that this long journey of toil and trouble uh, the journey you set out on to gather the power that you would need to face these foes is starting to pay off. Uh, as you begin to, um, as you sleep, you unlock arcane mysteries from uh, with, within your own minds. You had one of these benches. Um, there's, yeah, there's one of those benches on the boat, and you each take a turn to sit down. And you, I can, I, I can make myself out of snow. <laughs> um, <laughs> Uh, and the magic benches uh, continue to aid you in your journey. I'm, I've got the cat on my lap right now, the big fat one, and uh, my one of my legs has gone to sleep and got pins and needles, but I don't want to move because he's too cute. Anyway, um, so you Rip level up. Um, you awake in the morning feeling refreshed and ready and raring to go. Uh, the ship now seems to be working not perfectly, but it's um, there seems to be some kind of cohesion forming amongst the group. They're all veteran experienced sailors who've um, been in not quite these scenarios before, but have sailed on the high seas for a very long time, and they begin, and being a pirate, being a sailor, is very similar. There's just different levels of plundering involved. Um, and they begin to work together. Um, so, as day breaks, on the, ch on the choppy um, sword, sea of swords, what do you guys want to do? Discuss where we're going next. Well, yeah. That's a well, good question. I haven't considered. Next steps? I didn't think of this. So, so I, um, I guess it's the world of dragons again, huh? With their ritual weirdness. So, if, just to uh, remain, you have ten days until harvest tide. Total. Ten days until harvest tide. Um, let's let's not go there on day nine. So, so day you, guys, you have something no, waiting I, for thinking, you in Boulder's Gate, as well. I'm thinking we should the maybe. Right. Yeah. I'm thinking we should maybe check out the other towers that we don't know anything about. Yeah. Hmm. What if we get yeah. captured and then we miss the date or something and then? Ella Krona is unbeatable super dragon lady. Nah. It's a risk. Yes. We could <coughs> also and, and all the defeat her now and then check the other towers out. I was going to say, are, are all towers like saying go? Sorry? Have all the towers not got the same go? We don't know. Right. If all the towers have got the same goal. All the towers, from what you know, all the towers seem to be similar in size and construction. Their materials may vary. Um, but they appear to 
Uh, and they are, like I said, they are all situated on those key nexus points of the ley line network of the of the mm. of the material plane. Uh, you only know of the Well of Dragons because you've been there. You're unsure at this point if they all have the same goal, what the other towers are doing. You know that the Well of Dragons is siphoning draconic essence and ancient magics for unknown reasons. Uh, you do not know what's happening at um, the High Forest or in Jolt. All you know at the High Forest is that it's currently surrounded by uh, a Im near impenetrable wall of thorns, and the elves of the High of uh, Silver Moon are struggling to assault it with their Griffin Riders. Um, you also know that uh, Falderai Everbloom is currently um, uh, Falderai Everbloom is currently. Uh, they're an ex-High Warden of the High Forest. You also know that Zod the Immortal is currently holding some kind of a tournament down south in the jungles of Chult. I mean, I honestly feel like if we clear one tower and disrupt whatever they're doing to the ley line, ley line, it doesn't really matter which one we disrupt first. I know we know the time scale that they're working to, but I'm just thinking we know what's going on in the track I don't know where else. That's fair, yeah. Or oh, the elves, because we could gain some allies, the elves. We could yeah. we could fly above the forest with the feather gale now. I the last trip through the forest with the spirits was enough for me. I would appreciate <laughs> it if we didn't have to fight off uh, tons of beasties and spirits again. Um at least we should talk to um I mean, we also have another method of flying, waiting. Ah. Um, okay. Yeah, but uh, yeah, and, and the, the the airship possibly, but it's so it's a, a thousand miles probably to Evermoon, that's every moon. Where's the nearest place we could for the high forest? Probably Long Saddle. That's seriously the closest thing. I don't think. So what's up? Well, Log probably is south. Sorry, I was just responding. I was doing some work stuff. So, sorry, what was the question? The closest we've been to, to Silvery Moon should be Log, right? Um, mm, or Long Long Saddle. Long Saddle, maybe. Yeah. How? It's up to you. Um, we haven't been to Mithril Hall. You've not been to Mithril Hall, you've not been anywhere really north. You've been to the Wildhammers area. You've been to Darbath Fortress, actually. Oh, we should talk to the Wildhammers. So, it's up to you, go where you want to go. Oh, um, we can... We, let's let's go talk to the Wildhammers and uh, hitch a ride with them south to uh, Silvery Moon. If they're willing to help us uh, out with the predicament, then... Uh, I mean, uh, aren't Silvery Moon question riders? Well... The dwarves are competent uh, two lots riders, of riders themselves. No, this the more the merrier. This is what I'm saying. Two lots of griffin riders. What can go wrong? Yeah. Sounds great. What's what's a closest what's what's the closest uh, portal or a teleport circle to the Well of Dragons then? Because if if we can get there, the nearest teleportation we... circle is yeah. going to be like Baldur's Gate. You don't even have them yeah. there. We, would the closest teleportation circle is going to be Candlekeep, really? No, we're, we're talking about amulets of plane. If you want to amulet oh, right. Banff, yeah, yeah, the closest right. place you've like been Banff. to to the Well of Dragons is the Well of Dragons. The closest place yeah. you've been to uh, <coughs> the Silvery Moon would probably be uh, Darbath Fortress. It's only about two hundred fifty miles away. But you'd have to oh, then yeah. go to the Wild Hammers. The Wild Hammers are four hundred miles away. Um, <laughs> Griffins are fast, but they're not that fast. I, w I w would lay my vote on going to the Well of Dragons and doing whatever we can to stop their business. Okay, but have we got any plan on how to... We know what their business is. We know what they're like. We, we know more about the Well of Dragons than we do... We do, but that's else. what I'm saying. Have we, have we got a plan on how to... Our scapes are all spy guys in the area. You um, um, you know where right. um, the Delcia and the Nightborn were dispatched to various locations. You never checked where or checked in where they've been. 
so you know we just that go to um, the leader of the Nightborn was at the Well of Dragons, but last time you checked in, he was not doing very well. He was uh, very, he was on the brink of death, mm -hmm. and that was um, Kethar. So how long, theoretically, what do we think uh, would it take to fly from the Wild Hammers down to Serena? Doing the maths now. Because if we can ask them for help, then go to Silvery Moon, ask them for help, then help them so they will help us. Talk to Aldor, our Harper friend. The Griff and, uh, Griffin Riders realistically can travel probably up to 100 miles a day. Mm -hmm. So, four days. Yeah. Uh. That's a lot of days. <coughs> so, maybe, we could, maybe we could get uh, a message to them. Find out if they're friendly with the elves. True. Yeah, we can talk. We've also got Hecate, who could help us at the Well of Dragons. Hecate. Yes. Uh, yep. I still have the horn. Yeah. Uh, he'd make so... a he'd make a brilliant distraction. Um. Or a great friend. <laughs> Strangler of Tiamat. Uh, or yeah. of Re reviving Tiamat. the war between giants and dragons. That's an idea. Yeah. <laughs> Strangle the snake. Uh, and like I said, you do have the uh, thing waiting for you in Baldur's Gate. You don't know anything about that at this point, though. So, lots of choices, lots of places you can go. Open world map. Ugh. I hate it. Uh, well, I mean, with the plane shift, we can be anywhere. Oh, sorry, I can, put you in a, I can put you back in a linear adventure if you prefer. <laughs> um... We can plane shift anywhere, right? Uh, I mean, the risk is... Anywhere that you've been. We yeah. can go to the Earth plane and back. That does not does not have time effects. And it's not too dangerous popping up in the camp. Or well, maybe popping up at the camp. Popping up in Tanneris. Tanneris. Yeah. Um, and then pop back. I think we can be pretty, fairly quick with the, with the amulet. So it's up to you guys. I'm voting for anywhere, anywhere we could get extra allies. How about we use the teleportation circle to get to Candlekeep? <gasps> then fly with our fly forms to Baldur's Gate. Check out what they have to say with the... Uh, Wilfred. Yeah. With the, the uh, galleon, the skiff thing. Um, Waiting for us. Hang on. Right. So we're talking about whether we want to try and take down the Dragon Tower now, or whether we want to go somewhere else, yeah? So I think the, the, the gnome in Baldur's Gate offered to give us uh, an experimental airship, a small yeah. one. Yeah. And it uh, could but be I, potentially I... very useful, and then we can. Uh, Think about what our next steps are. Yeah, that's that's very true. However, I also kind of think maybe taking an experimental airship dragon is probably not a good idea. Well, there are the wyverns we have to deal with. I mean, yeah, exactly. what else? What kind of, what other kind of field test would you have? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, let's give it two hours and we'll be in Baldur's Gate. Yep. And see what's what. You can plane shift to Baldur's Gate. If you want, either if you I want to take the risk. It's up to you guys. I mean, I'm... if you fail on the ship, then the ship will be ripped apart. Um, <laughs> just saying. I was, I was thinking. We saved you. I... There's a hole in your boat. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking, and you know, you know, my style is let's just go in good. Yeah. So why don't we bump to because we know the areas around the World of Dragons, like where escapes guys for hiding out. So why don't we aim to get to like that? And then when we know it's getting time, why don't we use cloud to try and fly in tower? Tower. I'm sorry, you're cutting out. Oh, sorry. Can you hear me now? Carry on. Yeah. Why don't we use cloud for try and fly into the tower through the door that they come out of for the sermon? Yeah. I think the tower is not sealed or anything. 
No, but that's what I'm saying. So we could just literally serialize on the inside, ready to try and take them out as they come in. From I mean, there was no obvious door anywhere on the tower. I checked. There was the balcony. Yeah, that's what I mean. But the balcony. Ground level door, so it's not that easy for the other, the main bulk of the camp to get in, unless yeah. there is some magically hidden thing that I missed. Very true. And we don't know what it looks like inside. I am literally just thinking, let's just fly in there, trying to fuck it. End of story. Yeah. You guys are taking a much different path than I anticipated, but I like it. <laughs> that would... Uh, I don't know even if we should dis uh, start a distraction, because if we keep it fairly contained in the tower, I don't think that, that's exactly they'll what notice, I mean. really. Yeah, exactly. They're just there for... As the... Unless, of course... During the fight, someone runs out and is like, help, and then we have a million weapons on us. Yeah, but we can still Cloudform. Cloudform takes a minute to shift into, I think uh, we'll yeah. be slaughtered in the meantime. We can hold them off. Nero can teleport out of that. That's a lot, that's a lot of, um... Also, how the weapons we get in the tower if we're inside? <laughs> well, they can waddle in, I think. <laughs> <laughs> what if they take the fight outside? I mean, Electrona is a, a supposedly a dragon, and uh, I don't think she'll spend much time inside with her at a disadvantage. Yeah, but we don't think they're at the moment, do we? Sorry? We don't think they're at the moment. We think they're trying to... Uh, once, once again? Sorry, we're get, getting a bit of... Inter sorry, Jojo, we're getting interference from a little mic or something? I think it's rubbing against the shirt or sorry, something. Sorry, it's, it's because I've had to switch to my phone. That's right. So, say again, then. Uh, I was saying we don't know if they've summoned her already. We know they're trying to. No, Alacrona, the blue dragon, dragon, black dragon. Oh, black dragon. I don't think they'll summon Tiamat. I think they're going to empower her somehow, and uh, this is a, a very elaborate ruse on her. Uh, Even so, it was all a ruse. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we'd still like to take her now while she's empowered. Exactly. Yes. And yes, you might try and take it outside. Yeah, I, I see what you're saying. But the, we're never going to have this. Some of these uh, dragon guys were. They transformed into dragons and they were scary as fuck. They broke through the wall of force. Just saying. Yeah. So. Yeah, I mean, we're never going to have this. It's enemy territory, it's dangerous. We? We're never going to have this, are we? But it's always going to be. Yeah. This does. We can more, maybe get a foot mobilization. How are we get them there in 10 days? Impossible. Yeah, exactly. Who's going to be just a... If we try and contain it into the tower... The thing is, uh, I think what we can do is, uh, with the, the 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 airship, if it's if it's as fast as he is uh, making it out to be, it could probably outrun the wyverns and just be ahead of them and distract them. And they'll follow for, I don't know, long enough uh, while we take out uh, the the Beef Brothers inside. Maybe, but then what if they destroy it and just waste the ship? Well, it's one of five foes, and I think the sacrifice would be worth it. Yeah. We're not here to keep an airship. There's always going to be some form of damage. I mean, we lost the city, so I think uh, sacrificing a flying boat is fine. Sky boat. <laughs> Very important. Yeah. I'm trying to think if there's any other option. You can also try to emulate one of the... F the, the Mage's shut up a flare kind of thing. And, um, I think we could emulate that, and that would also rally them away from us. Yeah, that's true. But then how are we going to get into our row B? We don't Actually, have to be the ones emulating. Okay, yeah, also. Maybe Wes can help? I mean, it, it would be a simple we haven't really spell, and then he can fuck off uh, with his teleportation stuff. Yeah, I was going to say, we haven't really heard from him. Yeah, locked himself away in the tower. Yeah, we should go to Border's Gate and talk to Skyboat people. Talk to the gnomes! Wilfred. It's... Eight gnomes we want to talk to. You oh you want to talk to the Wezzers. 
The Wessels and yes. Wilfred. Wilfred is also a gnome, right? Wilfred's a gnome, yeah. 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 See, the gnomes. So, Ball's Gate then? First uh, time. I, guess. I, I just want, I'm, yeah. I'm with, kind of with Zim. I just want to take some towers down. Because I think that's best. I mean, bit. if we keep talking, we'll be in uh, Ball's Gate soon. Okay. Anyways, yeah. without teleporting. <laughs> Yeah, let's hit Baldur's Gate first. So you want to go to Baldur's Gate. How do you plan to hit Baldur's Gate? Um, Scathe does have his wind walk back if that is what you wish to use. Or Nothing you can try yet. and um, Scathe can bamf you back with the amulet. It's up to you guys. Do you want Scathe to bamf with the amulet? Or do you want I don't to want to ruin the, the ship. Yeah, since he's got lucky. Can we not... Teleport, tele teleport to Candlekeep. I can do a tele so yeah, teleportation yeah. Candlekeep. That should be doable. When and then it shouldn't be very far to what? Will escape with the platform. Okay. Um, it will take you mm, to get from Candlekeep to Boulder's Gate in fart form. Will take you five hours. It's fine. That's what you it's early in the morning. It's early morning. Be there by noon. Be there by noon. Okay. So, for the sake of brevity, um, goodbye. Uh, you say you say your farewells <laughs> as you can't. You you step out onto the deck, and Nera begins to inscribe the teleportation circle in, in chalk on the deck. And many mm -hmm. of the sailors um, kind of stop what they're doing to and uh, inspect this strange display of what they think is Don't artwork. Not the combat music. Don't touch it. They're like, keep it away, and the tale of word has spread as, of <laughs> what you guys do, and you get the idea that a lot of these people are like, yeah, not fucking with that. <laughs> um, so you spend ten minutes, you draw out your teleportation circle. Um, Captain Bluebeard uh, and Captain Morgan uh, head over. Oh, uh, uh, are you are you heading off now? Yeah. Hey. Huh? Um, yeah. I'm not sure what you're doing, but does this need to stay here? Not after we're gone. Okay. It should disappear when it's gone. If anyone touches it, will they explode? Yeah, they'll be fine. He looks both yeah. back at both of yeah, you. Yeah, like... they'll be fine. <laughs> Once we're gone, they'll be fine. Okay, <laughs> good to know. Um, well, um, it's been fine working with you. Um... I guess we'll see you when we get back. Um, a payment has been settled, so um, well, you're free to go. Um, as Captain Bluebeard said, we uh, well, he is in your debt, and uh, we've we've worked out a mutual agreement that I will be um, first mating for now, uh, as it is his larger ship, and he has more experience in the open ocean. I uh, it was a it was a fine compromise. Um, he gets the best bottle of rum. Um, <laughs> To be honest, I think it was quite a fair sacrifice. Um, but should you need us, uh, should you have need, um, or um, or you have some coin you want to spend, you know where we'll be. Well, I'm sure you can find us, you strange, scary people. Uh, Captain Morgan? Uh, yes? I don't know what you hope to get out of this adventure, but it, I hope it has been all... You hoped it would be. It, an adventure it has been, and one that will earn me many dr t drinks in the tavern as I tell the tales of Ignean Seat. As he walks away, I'm just going to go, Captain. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Captains? <laughs> they both nod, and they're still getting used to it. Uh, as near you How many people can we teleport? Uh, Eight, right? So, Nira, as you complete your teleportation circle, you kind of hold the spell on the cusp of completion as you will stand around on the circle. The um, the glyphs begin to hum with arcane magics as most of the as the glyphs light up one by one to signal um, the chevrons of the of of your stargate. Um, <laughs> most of the sailors kind of take a step back, like. Uh, a bit of scared, uh, but you kind of give you give them a smile, um, big row of shiny teeth, and it kind of doesn't yeah. really calm them. Doesn't work. Doesn't um, even know what it's no, but uh, they kind of it's kind of a you see them watching with a mixture of fascination and fear. 
Um, but the teleportation circle uh, is ready to go whenever you want to uh, let rip, as it were. Uh, is there any, uh, are you good to go, or is there anything else you want to do? Well, good luck to you all, and uh, we hope to see you uh, in one case. I uh, see ya, see ya guys later. Mm-hmm. And with that, you go through. One the... more thing. <laughs> <laughs> Don't ever know. Um, as you feel that familiar sensation of the teleportation circle grabbing you and sending you floating through the astral sea, before you make the uh, this, they're much softer now. As nearer is getting better and getting uh, more experience, the landing becomes softer and softer. Scathe still struggles. Uh, as you land outside of Candlekey with a th- with, uh, with a with a gentle, t- as your feet touch the ground, um, it is still early morning here. Time strangely enough, has not changed. Um, uh, yeah, and you finish up in Candlekeep. Um, you see a few of the guards just kind of give you look over, give you an upward nod. What's up? Uh, and then allow you to carry about your business. What would you like to do? Uh, let's just get straight on. Okay. You want to, you want to farm here, the Yeah. Okay. Um, Scathe casts, uh, using Feather Gale, casts the Wind Walk spell as over the next minute you take on your gaseous forms. And five hours later, you're in Baldur's Gate. It's really amazing. Ooh, fast travel. Um, you activate your fast travel glyphs. And no, no, gas travel. Gas travel, sorry, yeah. yes. <laughs> <laughs> How could I be so blind? Um, and you find yourselves outside the gates of Baldur's Gate. Baldur's Gate only has one gate. There you go, then. Uh, outside, the Baldur's you stand gate. outside Baldur's Gate. <laughs> okay. Um, you see the the flaming fists. Um, as you you kind of missed out, you missed out nearby, uh, and you head it. And then you kind of you missed out a little bit better, and you walk in. Be a bit weird, otherwise. Mm-hmm. But the guards um, kind of give you an acknowledgement and allow you into the city. And you return once again to the magnificent, run-down city that is Baldur's Gate. Where to? Which name first? How's your mother, Geo? Oh, yeah. Ooh, right. <laughs> oh yes, I forgot about her. I have a mother. I, I, I was just gonna say, I have a mother. <laughs> Me too. That's so strange. Yeah. We have something in common in now. Common. I don't. Yeah. I don't know. Overrated. I do feel that if we're going to get into the situation we are just about to, with no guarantee of what's going to happen to us, you might want to say hi to her. Yes. Yeah. She's still not. Uh, she's still not better. No, she's stable, I think, but uh, not improving. Yes, the last time you saw her, she was kind of in that... Oh, yeah, um, that necrotic state. Kind of that um, <clears throat> dull grey coma. Uh, stable, yeah. not getting any worse, but not getting any better. Yeah, I'll go visit her again. Right now. Has anybody tried greater restoration? Not Probably not. Probably not. I don't think many people can do that. It's, 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 like, not, it's not a common thing. Um, no, otherwise, the like, healing sanctuaries would be very different. No. I've got a grievous disease cured. Oh, okay. yeah, I, just, I didn't know if there's going to be like one high, there's a couple of higher level, a high level person. Unfortunately, at not. This hospital. you guys at this point are pretty special. Okay, because in that I case, I feel like I should offer to try. Um, make me a religion check or a medicine check. I can't. Case. Okay, I will make one in uh, for you. Thank you. I physically can't do anything. I'm on 4G now. That's it. Uh, At least you have 4G. I know. <laughs> like, I would have just disappeared off the face of the earth otherwise. There's no thing like that in general. Is it? Do you not have 4G? Nope. I'm sorry. Um, yep. They have 4G just in that. Romania. Romania has the fastest internet in the whole EU. I know, it was amazing. Oh, it was so nice. Um, uh, ate a lot of data, but I've got a large data package. It's okay. Regardless, uh, sixteen. Unlimited data, baby. Uh, um, unlimited data. Unlimited part. Well, um, so Jojo, you have read about this disease, um, Ramirez disease. Yeah. 
um, as it was researched by you guys in Candlekeep, and you get the idea that this is, while it is a disease, it is a degenerative disease. Uh, it's not like uh, like a virus or a cold or something that would be snapped out. It's something that wears the body down over time. And you have the feeling that um, the Rage of Restoration spell may not be as effective in this situation. Maybe Thank as the disease had taken hold, but as it's taken, as it's um, running its course, um, it may not be as effective or very effective at all. But would I think, would it be able to kind of just al alleviate some of the symptoms and like give her a little bit longer so that the doctors could work a bit longer to find a cure? Well, right, there, there is no known cure. The only, well, the only known um, thing is to obtain the ember flora from the high forest, which is what you found okay. out before, to, to make the right. special ointment uh, to um, not to reverse, but to negate a lot of the symptoms. Right now, she is in this uh, kind of uh, stasis almost. It's it's interesting. Um, you haven't visited, but as it has been described to you, it's not something you've come across before. Um, <laughs> Oh, I forgot about the stasis, so maybe even if trying to make her feel a little bit more comfortable might break the effects of the stasis. Unknown. There are a lot of unknowns right now. You're not even sure what's causing this. You've not come across this kind of uh, medical effect before. Yeah, <sighs> Remote actually, diagnosis won't do us any good anyways. No, I just thought if it would be worth going and giving... I mean... Something is what I'm... You can go visit her and we go talk to the gnomes well, in the meantime. So to, it's, it's Giovanni's thing. I just thought I should at least try and offer. Yes. Actually. Uh, why don't you come with me? Okay. okay. Do cleric. Do cleric shit sometimes. Just cleric shit. So you uh, head over to... Also, should see if we should any, could any, do, do anything about your eye, man. Really oh yeah, you forget. You're missing an eye. Um, it's got a, it's got a really cool eye patch though, so it's fine. Yeah. Um, so the two of you get a magic eye or something. Oh, you put something in it. Just constantly cast arcane eye. Um, I, I, I see the hole when you take a bath, like when we're, we're doing the shower things. And dear God, it's freaking creepy. You know when we're doing the shower things. <laughs> yeah, because <laughs> this group communally showers because there are communal showers. Um, it's progressive, the progressive nation Baldur's Gate is. Um, <laughs> I was gonna say just on a on on the on the pirate ship. Have, it's not like there's only gonna be that many. Oh yeah, because there's a shower yeah, on the pirate showers. ship. You've been on a pirate ship before. Um, <laughs> I've, I've, I have a shower on my boat. <laughs> we filter the water in from the sea. And we filter it. Yes, because that technology. I have also I also have a shower on my imaginary boat. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> boats aside, there is no showering on the boat. Anyway, so the two of you head over okay, to the baby. hospital. Whatever, you yeah. guys head over to the uh, the hospital. Uh, you do you knowing your way? You navigate through, and you see the matron yeah. once again. Um, she uh, she seems to be attending to some patients. She kind of gives you uh, as as you head over down the corridor. She sees you coming and just kind of puts a hand up for you to wait. Um, Jojo, as you're looking around, the it, it reminds you a lot. Of Helm's Healing Sanctuary, it's got a it's got a very similar vibe, uh, but it has what appears to be it. Whereas the Healing Sanctuary was more like an open clinic, where people would go in for treatments, for medicines, and for rest. Uh, the area that you are now in appears to be more it's more hospital in nature, in the fact that it has separate wards and it has separate rooms for patients for long-standing issues. Um, you never really. Um, uh, visited your mentor's wing too much, he just didn't let you. Mm -hmm. um, uh, but this is, you get the idea this is what Mason's day to day would have looked like. Ooh, like because as, the as actual researchers do. Yes, yeah. he was a, as he was a specialist on curses and diseases and like long running effects, this kind of, you get the idea this is probably what his day to day would have looked like when he wasn't scolding you. Um, Scolding me, telling me off, cutting me around the ear, dragging me away from fighting like all the paladin. Exactly. But moment uh, after about after a few minutes, the matron uh, walks over. Ah, oh, um, well, welcome back. It's, it's it's good to see you. Well, uh, yeah. oh, you you have a friend. Yes, this is Johanna. Um, 
Hi. Uh, nice, nice to meet you, Johanna. Um, she's a cleric. She's here too. Uh, she's are, you, are, you, are you a friend of Albert's? Mm, yes. Nice. Yes. Uh, very nice to meet you. And she gives you a bit of a curtsy. Um, I, I, I don't look at Giovanni. I just not nod at you like. <laughs> <laughs> um. So, uh, would you, I, I take it you're you're here to visit you visit your mother? Yes, please. Oh, please, please. Um, well, follow me. You, uh, follow me. And she leads you down a few corridors and back to the the the, the same room that you visited before. Yeah. Uh, Jojo, you can see various rooms. It's like long long corridors with. Uh, you can see some of them appear to be patient rooms, and other ones appear to be uh, almost offices. Again, reminding a little bit like uh, Dr. Mason's area, where he has his own private study and office. It seems to be kind of a mix mash between the two. Um, but not as... Dr. Mason's office was not fancy, but it wasn't bad either. And you get the idea that this kind of area seems to be more, more run down. It is not as grand, and it is a bit more cramped as well. Um, very much a similar of Baldur's Gate compared to Waterdeep in general. Um, eventually, you're you're uh, sent uh, to um, Geo's, uh, or Albert's mother's room, and the matron lets you uh, leads you inside. Uh, she says, I've, uh, "I'm afraid we um, we haven't seen a lot of change since your last visit." Um, she I'm sorry to hear that. Well, she's it's she's not getting any worse but she's not she's not awoken yet either um, it's it is it is it's very strange I've I've studied in this I've worked here for many 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 decades and I've not come across anything like this before it's uh, hardly why I brought my friend here who's a cleric um, well, if there's, if there's anything you can do, uh, my lady, yeah. please, um, we would be most gracious of your assistance. I studied as a guy who did things with, like, poisons and curses and weird affect things. So at least I can try and pretend that I'm as good as he is and have a look. Oh, that, uh, thank you. Um, hmm. Would you like me to leave, leave you two here? Yes, you can. Oh, so... You. Thank you. Well, my, my office. Well, you know where my office is. Yes. Yeah. Um, if you. you need anything, um, just just come and get me. Sure. She, this li little little old lady, potters off, shuts the door behind you, and leaves you uh, with um, the um, the prone, uh, withered form of this once strong uh, woman. You can still see right. that she. Yeah. So Jojo, as you as you kind of go around, you can see she's laying in bed. Uh, make me an initial medicine check to start with, actually, just to give me for a diagnosis. Oh, can you? You can't. <laughs> for fuck's sake! <laughs> it's a habit, okay? I could just roll some actual die. There we go. So we've got a thirteen on this one. So as you kind of look over, look over the woman, you can tell that uh, the first thing you notice is this um, kind of almost a graying to the f uh, to the flesh, to the skin. Um, the a lot of the features appear to be sunken and hollowed, um, similar to what you see in, in, in the sick, in the elderly. Um, but it is very pronounced here, and it's uh, and some of the uh, the colourings and some of the um, like. From the shades and the features that seem to be exacerbated by the strange grey skin tone, um, but uh, she lays there. Um, she seems relatively peaceful. <coughs> breathing, breathing is not laboured. It seems relatively stable. Um, <coughs> uh, looks like she's been cared for. You can tell that she's recently been uh, bathed in some some way. Um, yeah, looks. <sighs> It's a strange contrast of look, looking very peaceful and okay, and like death at the same time. So, Doctor, <laughs> what do you think? There's something going on. Yes, yeah, she, 
it's weird. She looks. It's yeah. like she, she. When I do physical and you like look at the physical, she's fine, mm -hmm. and yet there's she's there's less of her than there should be. It's like something's taken her soul and just withered it and the body. So weird. <laughs> Giovanni starts sweating. <laughs> Sorry. She looks like she'd be lovely, though. You have her nose. Well, thank you. Very cute. I don't know. I mean, on her, it's cute. Would you... Uh, would you mind trying your spell? I can. Also, I want to know, is there... I don't know what med medicine could happen in this. Is there a way to check her brain scans through magic? No, you can't provide or a CAT EKG. scan. EKG. <laughs> I would just say e an EKG is like, is she, is she got like normal neural networks? <laughs> Unfortunately, medicine and science within this realm has not possessed the past that far ahead yet. Okay, um, if we survive, that in electricity a week. isn't a thing either. If we um, survive in a week, I'll invent something. Okay, using we'll, lightning magic. We'll put that into the epilogue. Should you survive, as you go yes. on to invent the cat scan. <laughs> Scanning cats. <laughs> I was going to say they involve an actual cat. He's got to run a cat over it. Boop. That's a cat. <laughs> yep. So Jojo, you want to cast <laughs> Greater Restoration? Do you? Like I'm going to yeah, cast Greater Restoration. Okay, I'm going to make a uh, make a hidden roll. Everything's hidden. I don't know what you're doing. Okay, hidden roll complete. So, Jojo, as you step forward, you kind of, you you ready your divine magics, um, slightly sullied by the powers of uh, the powers that, of which grant you these divine magics. But it's still divine, still divine magics. And as you reach out uh, with the greater restoration, you attempt to cast it on uh, on the on uh, the prone figure, and it's a strange feeling that the magic takes hold, but is rejected at the same time. As if uh, whatever force is keeping this person, this body in stasis is warding external effects. This is annoying. This is not good. No. Is it, can I do some kind of detect magic thing? Is, I want to know what the nature of something that's holding. I this already something. have. What is? <laughs> and it's uh, necrotic. It's a necrotic. Is it, there is a, an, an, a a faint necrotic energy that envelops the body. Okay, so sorry. Do I have something called like protection from energy? Um, okay. not packed. I don't think. I don't know if you had I mean, protection I, I, from energy. I don't know. I have this, I, I'm sure I have a protection, or I have a protection from something. And you've from... Got, you've got, you do have protection from energy. You do not have it prepared. You also have protection from good and evil, which also is not prepared. It's not prepared because it's been a new day and I've not done anything on my sheet because no. I lost access to my... I know. However, I was... this was not an expected turn. Um, so you, you, uh, you cannot can cast those spells right now, but you do know that Greater Restoration, guess, greater restoration is quite a powerful spell, and mm. the other spells are weaker in their effects. Mm. I'll give you that one. Could have, yeah, I can't really cast anything at a high level anymore. I think that's my highest level. Oh. Okay. okay. Well then. I let out a big sigh. It's not impossible, because I think I can feel where it is. Mm -hmm. I just don't think I can do anything right now. That's fine. But I, th I think I, I it worked. It definitely worked. It's just yeah. there was something there stopping it from actually doing anything. Hmm. So I think there's a seal, and we need that a seal. We have to break it. We'll get through it. Move it. Yeah. We need 
to figure out a way to do that. I don't know. I mean, if we can do it before we go save the world, I'll try. And if not, I will make extensive notes. What we can do is we can go in to the high forest and look for the um, ingredients for the for the ointment. Yeah. So we have that uh, in, in in case this casing let's go, then we at least have that. Uh, between us, we can't grab new. We could probably, between the three of us, make something pretty decent. Yeah. What do you mean, make? Oh, the ointment thing. Oh, with the ointment, yeah, okay. What did you think I was making? <laughs> I don't know, spells? I mean, we could probably do that too, but we could. I mean, I think the ointment first, and then yeah. think about channeling spells. Maybe because she's got a good brain on her. And I think between you, your guys' brains, because you think differently, so between the way you get come up with something in the middle, mm -hmm. and then me working with you on the magic Healy thing. Yes, please. We will, we will do it, I promise. Yeah. Just need to <laughs> lay out a plan for how to organize ourselves in the coming days. <laughs> Survive. That's the first. <laughs> right. Well, Thank you so much for coming along with me. I really much appreciate it. What else are friends for? Thank you. Albert. I grew up here. I didn't like the name. I moved away, so I changed my name. Hey, I'm not complaining. <laughs> like a lot of names. I used to have a lot of names. Yes. Sometimes just picking the one that feels right for you and going with it's fine. Yeah, short is usually easiest. Yeah. I buy by Geo most of the time. Yeah. Makes me feel young, also. You are still human, though, right? I am. Yeah. Yeah. Hundred percent. Pretty much. I, you know, I thought you were like a young human guy. Inside check. Can't just... <laughs> <laughs> I can't judge humans, so I'm not inside checking at all. I'm, I'm lying through my teeth. It's a deception. Oh, well then. Sorry, okay, yeah. <laughs> uh... I, I saw an opportunity and I took it. <laughs> so, meanwhile, the rest of you. The docks. To Sorry. The docks. Crisps everywhere. Okay, so you head down to the docks and you start making your way down to the dry dock where the sky boat was being repaired. And you can see the large con construct that is there has been made, has progress been, progress has been made. You can see the entirety of what appears to be the outside shell uh, appears to be completed. The out, uh, you can see the floors taking shape and you, you can't see inside it anymore. Uh, the bottom of it and um, the hull, as it were, seems to have been completed. And work seems to be currently taking place on top of the ship. Um, you locate your way down to Wilfred's uh, warehouse, you know, with the sliding door. Um, and the four of you stand outside the sliding door. What would you want to do? Knock. Bonk, bonk, bonk. Push the sliding door. <laughs> I think it's closed. <laughs> this door, it makes no sense. Skate is baffled. <laughs> um, you knock on the door and a few minutes pass and you hear a... What? Visitors. Who is it? You can see it. Who? The guys with the boat to test it. Oh, you muppets. Yeah, sure. The door opens up and you see uh, this dusty gnome with these uh, this like thick leather overall, goggles on the head with a series of different lenses on it, big poofy black hair, um, 
and just stains all down the overalls. Took you long enough. Hey, Ben. Wet and uh, Kraken. Now that's interesting. We'll have to talk about that later. Anyway, come with me. Come with me. And he drags. He kind of grabs you by the by the uh, by the scruff on the, uh, on your wrist. And drags you inside. <sighs> shut the door. Shut the door. And as you see his workshop, it's a mess as always. But you do notice at the very back of the warehouse, this very large thing covered covered in a sheet. Well, I've got good news, and I've got really good news. Okay, give me the good news first. Good news is, I've finished. Good. Really good news is I think it works. Even better. Ah, stand back, stand back! And he toddles over to the sheet. And he grabs onto the corner and he pulls. And he pulls. And his feet start to skiz. What the fuck? Why did I put a sheet over this? Ah! A little help. Anybody? Zim? Okay, I'll do myself. I thought he's doing so strong. <laughs> it's a sheet. <laughs> Between the all of you, you grab a kind of core, core of this top and you pull it off, and you hear a ripping sound somewhere. Ah, uh, and as he does, you go, "Oh yeah!" I can fix that. <laughs> and the sheet pulls away, and you see. I think those were my pants. <laughs> <laughs> standing in the centre of this warehouse. This is a large warehouse, by the way. What appears to be a boat. Um, the boat itself stands maybe, it's not not huge, it's about 15 foot wide. You'd expect from pa- bow to stern, ship terms, uh, maybe 35 feet in total. You can see mounted, uh, it probably stands about 15, 10, 15 foot tall. Uh, you'd expect it to have space for two decks. Um, it goes, ta-da! You can see kind of fireworks uh, with uh, my illusion. You use it cast pyrotechnics. You'll blind your blind you from over, and you have to blink them, blink them shut. Uh, um, Very and, nice. Ta-da! And he points up, and you as you have a look, you can see it's got these slight, like uh, almost wing-like fins, partially sticking out of one side. Um, a rope ladder drops down uh, on one bit, and there appears to be some kind of a cabin on the top as well. Uh, from the ground level, you can also see two metal rods uh, sticking, kind of just jutting out at the front. Um, uh, the, uh, probably about three or four feet, they stick out. Those those took a while, but they're fun. What are they? Well, that's like I said, lightning ballistas. Duh. Oh. So, give you an idea of what your ship looks like. Ooh. Come on, come on! And he grabs onto the rope lever and starts to cl- climb up. She's a beauty. Ta-da! It doesn't have a name yet because, well, I mean, you're gonna supply her. You're gonna bring her back. So I'll let you guys choose the name. But Ooh. now this thing will take. It will carry up to eight people, maybe ten at a push. It's light. It's fast. It is not durable. Um. But it'll get you where you want to go pretty damn quick. Ah, uh, now this bad boy, he slap, turns around and slaps, and you can, as he's behind him <laughs> on the middle of the deck, this bad boy can fit so many <laughs> adventurers. I knew it. Um, and he turns around, and you can see kind of in the centre of the deck, uh, in for um, intent, for all intents and purposes, this bit here, which looks like a mast, uh, you can see a large blue crystal. Probably about three or four foot wide, uh, and kind of in sphere. It's kind of embedded into the center, and you can. It's kind of translucent, and inside you can see a familiar object, and you you can see uh, the rock heart that you've harvested a week or so prior to. It's kind of encased in this crystal. Now this here, this is your power source. This one fuels the whole thing. Do the flying. It does the does the ballistas. Works the toilets. Um, does everything really. Um, but you've got to keep it charged. It uses a lot of juice 
Uh, but any of you guys with um, like magical know-how should be able to keep it running. Um, just focus on it for about 10 minutes and, well, it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, you probably fit about 8 people in here before it starts to get a bit snug. Um, but you can crow it with about 4 or 5. Now, there are some quite intricate bits of bits to it, um, and I'm going to have to give you a bit of training on how to use it, because I'm not having you crash my ship the moment you leave the harbour. Take me a good couple of hours to train, I'll, I'll, if the, uh, I'll need most of you. Is, uh, cause there, was there more of you? I forget. Uh, there's more of us. There's well, only two more of us. Okay, well, if you all want a tutorial on how to use the ship, I'll need you all here. Uh, I can do it this evening. Take me two or three hours to give you the um, the the whole rundown, as it were. I'm guessing the the is it the, who runs Baldur's Gate? The council. Uh, there's count the council of four runs Baldur's Gate. Yeah, I'm guessing because they've kind of got a monopoly or yeah, shit, they probably won't be that happy to do this out, would they? Uh, we don't really know about it. It's kind of like a pet project. I may have borrowed a few resources for it. So no, they probably wouldn't be happy if you... No, um, but if you went took it out at night and were pretty quick, they wouldn't notice. Okay. So, uh, so uh, why didn't I put a cloaking me. field on it? That would have been really clever. Next time, next time, Wilfred, next time! <laughs> so so oh, maybe this evening you give us your tutorial and then after dark we'll get it out of the city. Yeah. Sounds like a deal oh. to me. Just oh. you or the rest of you. Uh, I think we'll try and get everyone. Very well. Try not to be too conspicuous. People are keeping an eye on this warehouse, hence the sheet. <laughs> How fast is this thing? Mm, it depends. I can. Well, when I go through it, I'll give you a spec sheet. Okay. Complicated. Uh, but if I was, well, if you were to run it at maximum speed for a day, uh, I would be surprised if you cover about 400 miles. That's quick. I said it's quick. It's not durable. Yeah. Um, it's got a few nifty features. I'll go for them all later. Now, uh, I've got other work to do, unfortunately, so you want to bugger off and bring back your friends? Okay, okay. okay. Awesome. All right. When you get to the door, so I know it's you, do this special knock. And he knocks four times. <laughs> okay, got tool. it. <laughs> and so there's two lightning ballistas and one regular one? Uh, just the two. So the, the, the ship design is a little off. Uh, imagine instead you've got like a... Because uh, strangely enough, I couldn't find the perfect design. Uh, but there's like a lightning ballista oh, yeah. here. Um, you saying you didn't draw that, Nathan? Oh, I did, but... There's like the there and there. Ignore what's on the actual ship, but you kind of got on the on the front deck. You've got these two ballistas that kind of stick out at like forty-five degree angles, mm -hmm. and they pivot. But I'll go through all that later. Now he, he shoes you out. Oh, be gone, be gone! You're interrupting my work. Door slides shut behind you. Well, um, kind of impressed. I think uh, this can definitely outrun the Wyverns and keep them at their tail. We just need a pilot. To give you a rough idea, just a comparison of speeds, um, the maximum speed of this airship is 150. 150 um, what? 150 feet per feet per round. Okay. A Wyvern is 80. So this is half All of right. your fart speed. But lasts forever. Good. There are some special features. Just... I'll go through all the features with you later. Do we want to? We should ask West to pilot this. I think. Well, the tutorial. So the tutorial gives you will teach you how to pilot it and maintain it and run it. Yeah, yeah, but we need to be not on the ship and flee from wyverns. We need to fight dragons, and that's why we need someone manning the ship. Someone who's who's magic, I think. We need some of this magic. We could get Kelonetta, maybe. She would do that. That'd be cool. She's magic. Sky Captain Cap Sky Captain Kalonetta. Oh. 
That's good. She is, she is a Netherwinter, though. Yeah. She'd be perfect for the job. But you can, can you walk to Neverwinter. Can you stop your fan stories about yourself and your fantasy life? So you can walk to Neverwinter technically in about 10 minutes. We can. Let's go visit Wes. No. You're not there. <laughs> so. Anyway. You guys meeting up or. Um, amount of time we'll say is similar. So if you want to oh, meet up, uh, you can do. Are we in the place with the potions? Can I pick oh. them up? Um, I thought you already had, to be honest. I can't remember. I think we did just before we left. I think you did okay. before you left. Okay. Let's just say you did. The Dwarven Merchant gives you your potions if you haven't already. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Off to Wes. So you want to go to you want to meet up and go to Wes's Wanderer's Warehouse? I'd say so. Unless. Okay, Wes. Oh, doors open, right? Sorry. So you, you go to Wes. You, you, you meet up and you Wes's. you go to Wes's Wanderer's Warehouse. Yeah. Knock on the door. Oh, um, it's open. Come in. Right. And you see just ah, kind of finding normal doors. <laughs> That's it. You see um, Wes smile on his face, kind of just sat uh, stood behind the counter, gives you a wave. Oh hi guys, been a while. Hey Wes, how's things? Things are good. Um, no more town, no more cities have been destroyed. Um, I count that as good. How are you guys? <laughs> yeah, good, good. Um, we've make it, we're making progress. How's the modern Kane's lab? Um, I think I think Wes has got it stabilized now. Um, he's still trying to get some of the features online. Um, he had to mess with the mess with the underlyings. He wouldn't really tell me, um, but he had to mess with some of the underlying magics. It's stable, but a lot of the features don't work at the moment. Hmm. Done for maintenance. In, in, in a matter of speaking, yes. All right. Um. Can I help you? Is there anything you need? I don't have a lot in stock right now. Wes has taken most of our magic dust to do the tower. Um, passage, possibly. Oh. To another winter. Oh, I can do that. That'd be wonderful. Um, what time is it right now? We'll say two o'clock in the afternoon. Okay. In the evening. No, but we're all there, right? You're all so there. We... Should we get Canaletta for the... I mean, it's someone to to distract uh, the people, and I think it's better if the pilot is magically inclined to keep the rock heart going. And but you say it would take about four to five that group. To to crew it like on, on uh, to crew the ship and keep it running on a regular basis, it will take about four or five people. Piloting it is one thing. Um, it's like a ship. You can st one person can steer a ship. Uh, it takes a bit more to. Um, and you could have a small number of people. It's a ship of that size. You might be able to have one person keep it running for a little while, but without knowing the ins and outs of the ship, it's difficult to make a judgment. Hmm. Okay, let's go. This then. Let's let's go to Wilbur, <coughs> Wilfred, Wilbur, and um. Uh, let's get it checked out. I mean, we're all here, so we don't have to wait for tonight. Necessarily. Right? It's up to you guys. I think we... I guess the... Fearship isn't exactly the same. Sorry, uh, Katie, you're quite quiet. But I think the reason we had to wait for nighttime was because the uh, airship itself wasn't quite sanctioned by the city. Yes, 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 but uh, we can get instructed in the meantime. Yeah. Yeah, he just said in the evening, I think the, the yard had got fire. 
Alright, okay, Wes, uh, we'll, we'll be back tonight, oh. maybe. Okay, well, good to see you. Um, Best regard to Wes. I'll, I'll, I'll let them know. Wes is... Dear Wes. Wes, 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 Wes. So you return to Wilfred? Do you yes. special knock? Yeah. You like leave? You leave and you come back half an hour later. Uh, I'm gonna knock five times. <laughs> Who is it? Does <laughs> who's that? Guys, I'm not know. expecting anybody. We're waiting for the pilot. I don't know. I'm not expecting anybody. Please leave. I'm gonna knock four times. But what did you say? Come in. <laughs> um. He. Sliding door opens, he hurries you in, and sliding door shuts again. He's... <laughs> Sorry, Katie, I know I just said you're required. We're now, you, we're now getting a little static from you. Sorry. Love you. Um, uh, well, come on in. Come, is this everybody? Yes. Okay. Um, let me let me just check my diary, my schedule. He opens, he, flip, he turns around and he flips over a sheet of paper and starts studying it. Um, make, takes a quill out and writes a few things down on the piece of paper and flips it back over. Okay, my schedule is clear. <laughs> so... Glad you could make the time. Wow. Well, I'm more interested in this than building the barges. This is far more interesting. <laughs> so, here's what you need to know. Spiel. So... Wilfred goes to spend the next two or three hours instructing you on how to man the airship. Um, there is a certain, when as you board the ship, uh, there is a pilot who needs to almost attune to it. Doesn't take the hour long, but it requires one person to pilot the ship and maneuver it. And as they do so, they cut, they become more in tune with the magics of the ship, like attuning to a magical item, but in a lesser sense. It doesn't take as long either; just a few minutes to kind of kick in. But it's difficult to flip pilots on the side. Uh, he goes through the operation of the lightning blisters, and they work very similarly to the blister, the actual normal blisters on the high wind. Uh, they are on a pivot set setup, and they can be just uh, turned, and they just kind of have like a, a flick switch. They take a little bit of time to recharge, um, but they can fire pretty quickly. Um, and he also goes through some basic maintenance of how to charge the crystals. So the main crystal in the center. Um, actually, tell you what, let me give you a sheet instead. How's that? So it comes with its own little character sheet. So if you go into, if you now go into your summons and, well, not now. Uh, if you go into your now, go into your summons and constructs area, you'll see a character sheet called Airship. Can someone put the picture in the chat so I can also be excited? I will read the that read stuff out to you. So in terms of stats, it doesn't really have anything. Um, it, but I use the character sheet to give you an idea. The armor class is quite low. It only has a 13 armor class. A default speed of 120. I'll go through the fe features one by one because I'd rather than everyone clicking on them. Uh, has a <laughs> default speed of 120, which is roughly 12, 13 miles an hour, uh, which is still faster than most of your avian, uh, uh, like faster than the Griffin, faster than the Wyvern, um, and it's quite quick. Uh, it has a default uh, uh, health class, health of 60 points. If it takes more than 60 points of damage, it's going down. Uh, the crystal, it runs, so the, the ship runs on an energy system. Everything you do costs energy. Energy can be recharged by casting spells of a certain, of, of a certain level into the crystal. Uh, just the, your, the amount of energy you gain is equal to three times the level of the spell you cast. Cantrips do not affect it. So you cast a second level spell, you gain 6 energy. You cast a 5th level spell, you gain 15 energy. 7th, 21, etc, etc. Okay, with me so far? The energy is in the other, there's other resources in the in kind of the middle right where you keep your arrows and stuff. That is where your energy levels are. Okay. The pilot of the ship has access in combat or out of combat to a number of certain abilities. Um, and they have costs. You have the first action we have is called full speed ahead. Uh, this uh, will increase your running cost of the ship. Running running cost of the ship is ten energy per day. 
you can increase the if you double the energy output of the ship to 20 you can increase the base speed to 150 which will give you 400 miles per day 120 will give you roughly 250 miles per day roughly um, so that's full speed ahead you've then got I'm giving her all she's got additional 10 energy <laughs> will give you a burst of speed and give you additional 30 movement for one hour each time you use this ability, uh, you have a chance to damage the ship. The ship itself makes a con save, uh, and uh, which and the DC increases the more you use it. It uses more energy, but you can effectively, based on your luck, could very quickly move. You could move the ship very quickly in a short period of time if you wanted to, but there's an inherent risk to it. Another ability, and these are again these are abilities to uh, uh, accessible by the pilot. You have the ability Shields Up. Use an action or a reaction. You can spend 20 energy to gain an arcane barrier around the ship, granting you 20 temporary HP. You have an ability called Evasive Maneuvers. Again, that's an action. Drops your speed by half, gives you plus 3 to your AC, and any attacks made against you with disadvantage. No cost. You can cast Fire All Weapons. Cost of 30 energy. Um, and you can fire both ballistas on a round at a target. Same target, different targets. Uh, lastly, you also have the ability Return to Sender. Costs you maximum energy, but will teleport the ship and anyone aboard it to Wilfred's hangar. This one has a recharge time to it. There's also a general, which tells you a little bit about the ship. So basic cost on the ship, 10 energy per day. Standard distance is 250 miles. 400, uh, full speed ahead is 400 miles. When docked, uh, it will recharge. If you're not using it, you park it. It will recharge itself slowly. Uh, but you can also manually recharge it by casting spells into it. So three times the spell level, uh, uh, the level of the spell you've got. Firing each ballista does cost energy as well. So anyone can fire the ballistas manually on your turn. So you're on the ship. The pilot could be flying around. Whoever's got manning the ballistas can fire them as an action. Uh, each one costs ten. I need to write that down somewhere. But it costs. 10 energy per shot. Okay. That's the rough... Mm -hmm. uh, so that's the rough so, rundown of the ship. Any questions? Uh, yes. yes. Uh, do you have to be manned to the ballista? Do you have to, like, say, I sit at the ballista? So do you it's, have to be positioned there? It's basically, if you want to use the ballista, you have to go up to it, aim it, and fire it. Okay, like, so it's like on the boat. It's on the boat, yeah. so it's on, on, the, on the bow, you have the two ballistas. So if All I right. take you back onto the ship... Yes, please. That's all right. So, let um, me get rid of this. Oh, so, yeah. you'd oh, imagine... Okay. Ig you can see the one at the top there. Imagine that's two kind of next to each other instead. Yeah. So, if I was going to draw them on it, it would look like there's one there, and there's one there, for example. So, if you yeah. stand next to them, any one person can fire them. The businesses themselves can be fired once per round. Actually, sorry. The ballistas can be fired as many times as you want. So, what, like, Geo could fire a ballista, step away, and then someone else could move up and use another action to fire it again. The pilot then can, could then fire both on their round as well. You can shoot them very, very quickly and do a lot of damage. You will burn through your energy very quickly doing that, though. Sorry, I missed all of that. My, I just had a power cut, so my internet drops out. So how much does it cost to fire the ballista just normally so a normal ballista shot I'll, i need to put this into the uh the sheet but a normal ballista shot is 10 energy that gives you a plus 12 attack with a range of 80 to 180 normal 160 feet disadvantage anything beyond that not enough i would it'll cost you 10 energy per shot and does 4d 10 lightning damage to whatever you hit okay um theoretically you can shoot you could spend an entire round, every person could shoot, and the cat pilot could shoot, and you'd spend seven, six, like, eighty energy, I think, and you could do, like, twenty d10 damage or something like that, but you'd run out of power pretty quickly. Um, yeah, we did, we did casters just stood in the middle, just casting his spells and <laughs> That's it. So what you can do is you can set it to, you could basically point the ship in a direction and go, fly! And it will just keep going. Um... Mm -hmm. Uh, almost like a basic autopilot to it, but you can go fly, and then it will take you in that direction as the crow flies, and that will cost you, if you're at full speed, cost you 20 energy, if you're at normal speed, cost you 10 energy. Uh, but you can ch chop it up as you go at any point. Okay. 
Yeah. Awesome. And does it have a a air sac, or is it just floating because of the the heart? Just, it's you don't see any kind of flotation device. It seems to be mm. this central crystal uh, power source that um, is the source of the magic on the ship. Okay. Cool. Oh, that's a sweet ride. So yeah. these features and the numbers are subject to change. This is all based on theory craft, obviously. Uh, I've not play tested this. Um, but it's up to you guys. Uh, like I said, it, it uh, it's fast. It'll outrun most things, but it doesn't have a lot of health. You can spend money on you can spend energy on shielding to give you the barriers to buff yourself up. Uh, the shields do not stack, but if you break one, you can immediately recast it. But again, it will deplete your energy reserves. It only took three years, but we finally. You nearly missed it. You nearly went off without it. But if I were to put you back on the map. Uh, to show you distances, were you to run the ship at full full at uh, full speed, full speed ahead, not given all she's got, you could hit the high. You could hit Silvery Moon in two and a half days, roughly. If you use the additional speed boost, you could probably dock it down to two days, but you'd run a risk of it popping out, exploding on you. Um, and then from Silvery Moon down to World of Dragons is about two days as well. It's not a lot of it. There's, um, probably two and a half days to get to Silvery Moon, two days to get to the Well of Dragons. So you could go up to Silvery Moon and down again in five days, for example. Or you could go up to Silvery Moon, do what you need to do there, bamf it back with you guys on it to Boulder's Gate, and then fly over to the Well of Dragons in a day, a day and a half to two days. But we'd have to leave it at Boulder's Gate for like two days to charge. No, you days. can charge it yourself. Oh yeah, true. Yeah. So, as you're obviously as you're traveling, if you'd spent three days traveling, you can just cast. It only cast one seventh level spell slot to make it move fast. <clears throat> so, when when you say you've got to cast spells into it, does it matter what the spell it is? Does it no, no, no. Like it, it's more like just spell? it's like channeling arcane energy. And, and could you take the arcane energy from magic items? It's based on spell casting. Okay. It's not. It's not like a uh, like a steam engine where you can throw logs in it. You throw magic rings in it. It gets bit. It gets bit. It I don't know what I was up, thinking. But... Like some items have like one use a day spells. Could you like transfer that arcane energy into it? Um, less so. It's more of a case of because you're not casting the spell. It's more your yeah. your um, harnessing your own arcane abilities rather than actually casting the spell. You're taking a chunk of your power and putting it into the crystal. Okay. A good Makes question. Sense. But yeah, I mean, you may be at, uh, if you wanted to run it at maximum speed and even add a few a few uh, extra charges to it and try not to hope hope it doesn't break, um, you could easily power it with like a, a fifth, two or three, uh, like two fifth level spells. How magical do you have to be? Because I think even Zen can do some kind of weird spell slot. I was, I, I I have I have a level two and a level three spell, but I can only cast one. Unfortunately, Zinn doesn't really know anything about magic. He just kind of does stuff and it works. Um, Jojo, Geo, Nier, and Nira, and to a lesser extent as well, Scathe can charge it. The only people oh, who Rattles. can't is... Rattles. And Rattles. Rattles. The only person who can't is Zinn. Sorry. The rest yeah. of you are arcane-based or divine-based. Any it's, spell... It's Anyone's actually a spellcaster? I'm not sure about Scathe necessarily because he's only quarter-caster. May not be... Uh, may, he's only got two slots anyway. Wouldn't want to spend them. Um, but, um, <laughs> and he's still, he, he's but he still has automatically 7th level. True. I think Oops. it will be full casters can charge it. Uh, the rest can Yeah, Warlock would kind of break it. It would. Short rest, cast, short rest. Cast. Sorry, Danny. Uh, but yeah, so full casters um, can charge it. Well, okay. So there's four right, of you so can charge pack it. So should have enough explosives on the ship. Set it to go. Ram it into the tower. <laughs> I mean, sure. Um, there are more we'll towers, just one, saying. One very angry name. Yeah. <laughs> but we could always kill another rook for him. It wasn't that hard. There's yeah. always other towers, <laughs> they, but like they, you've they grow on trees. <laughs> <laughs> no, they grow in mountains, Nathan. Ah, uh, yes, sorry, my mistake. Thank you. <laughs> but yeah, so you now have your own fully-fledged airship that you need to name. 
Have a think about that. Yeah. I don't know the answer right now, but you need to name it. Um, it's got to be called the High Wind, surely. <laughs> in honour of the fallen ship. <laughs> the Excelsior. Kill it, call it whatever you want. Have a discussion about it. Whatever you want to, to name the ship is down to you. Um, but I think that is going to be a very nice stopping point for us for today. Yes. 10 o'clock. That was our first oh. session back. Oh my god, you've literally finished on time. Like, right on time. Holy cow. <laughs> well, <laughs> if not, Ollie would have started on time. If only we started on time, yeah. Just keep it going a couple more seconds. Just a couple yeah. more seconds, Nathan. Okay, so what I'm going to do is going to keep going. Just going to ramble on a little bit so that when I hit the stop, <laughs> like, stop recording like button, it's seconds. on time. Uh, but yeah, next week we are on as well. We I was maybe not going to be able to do it, but I've um, I've made some magic happen, and I will be available, and I will be available for a little while now. So I'm what like I'm you... around. I'm around next week, but I'm not around the week after. Okay, good to know. Okay. Remind me next week because I will forget. Yeah. Um, so I would appreciate it if you could spend some time having a think about what you want to do and where you want to go. You know that there is a stop recording.